G'day, g'day. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, let's get that. Chuck that in there. There we go. All right. There is that. Perfect. Hope everybody's well today. If there's anybody lurking out there. Okay. All right. I think I think we are good. Hey Jester, good to see you, buddy. Hope you've been well. Hope you've been keeping uh looking after yourself. It's very good to see you. And here we see the absolute legend in its natural habitat. Jester, thank you so much for the Prime sub. 22 Still Hecamons. Still quasi-functional, so have my dookie. I'm glad to hear you're at least quasi-functional, dude. Uh, thank you so much for the 22 months. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. It's very kind of you. Uh, right. Yeah, so we're going to be... We're going to be playing some more RimWorld tonight. Going to be continuing on the Merciless Academy. It's going to be a good time. And once we've played that for a few hours tonight, we're going to jump over for a sponsored segment about four hours in to check out Battle Dawn 2, which is a free to play MMO uh, strategy game. Don't really know too much about it, I have to say. But I'm looking forward to checking it out because I like MMOs. I like strategy games. So hopefully it'll be something up my alley. Maybe it'll be something up your alley. I don't know. But there's only one way to find out, and that is give it a crack. Good to see you, Validus. Eliza as well. Welcome in, both of you. I hope you're doing very well today. Uh, oh, I don't need that tab open. And close that into the labor hire fixed term. Oh, that's good, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good sign for sure. That's really positive. Fingers crossed that, uh, you know, it continues to go well for you. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. I'm anxious platypus. I'm yum yum meow and I'm yum yum meow. Cat. I'm a kitty cat. And I'm yum yum meow and I'm yum yum meow. Uh, Platty, hello there. Great to see you. Wanderer refused to eat her dinner and complained about eating her biscuits all night. All night. Oh my god. Guess what? She just tucked into for her breakfast. Oh yeah. 
the exact same bloody food. <laughs> you know what? That sounds exactly correct. That sounds exactly correct. I don't know. I don't know what else you can expect, really. <laughs> That's unfortunate, bloody. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. That is really, that is really frustrating. Dear, oh dear. Uh... <sighs> I fed Lucy not long before the stream got underway and she didn't finish her breakfast and there's still biscuits in the bowl and she's like whinging at me she's, she knows she knows when it's dinner time she knows I'm like you've got biscuits in your bowl and I went out with her to the kitchen I pointed at them I said look Look, dog, there's bo there's biscuits in your bowl. You can't come to me an hour before dinner's meant to happen and start whinging at me, all right? And I waggled my finger at her. She went, oh, yeah, there is biscuits in this bowl. <laughs> Let me eat some of them. <laughs> and promptly started tucking into the biscuits. She didn't eat all of them by dinner time wrapping around but <sighs> pets are pets are funny things pets are very funny things right hello Rachy, good to see you happy hump day yeah i can't believe it's wednesday already I, I was having i was having a bit of an existential crisis today because i was like i cannot believe i cannot believe it's november where has the year gone and I had a bit of a crisis because I'm like, I'm I'm now being pulled in so many different directions to try and get different things done. And this month and next month are going to be so busy. And there's still so much that I haven't done. Like there's literally things that I uh, have started working on back in May this year that I still kind of, you know, either on my computer or like on my desk of art stuff incomplete and I'm just I'm just like how have I gotten into this state and I feel kind of bad about it because there's a lot of things that I kind of want to do and I've committed to doing and I'm just not caught up and I I don't know where the time goes it really it's a mystery to me um but hey happy hump day <laughs> I guess <laughs> oh dear Jesse, you had the exact same frustration with one of your cats last night. They beat up the dog the night before and stole his food. Oh my god, Jester. Bully cats confirmed. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes, Platter, you just need to wait until you get hungry enough and then it's like, oh, well, you know what? My standards for food have gone down substantially. Now this looks really appealing. Hey Skip, it's good to see you. Welcome in. I hope you're well today. Welcome, welcome. The most handsome backwater Australian. <laughs> that's, that's one way to refer to me. I don't know if that's a compliment or uh, an insult. But we'll roll with it. <laughs> Sounds like my love life. What? Backwater? <laughs> or the... If you wait until you get hungry enough, everything starts to look good. <laughs> both work, right, I guess. Uh, Rachie says, Well, both of my dogs have been kept off of food from 8pm tonight because Jake is having his teeth cleaned tomorrow and he can't be trusted not to eat Amy's leftover food in the middle of the night. Oh my god. God damn it, Jake. Sort yourself out. Um, but hopefully Jake goes all right tomorrow getting his teeth cleaned. Lucy's Lucy's overdue to get her teeth cleaned at the moment. We're just waiting until we have... Uh, until until uh, a little bit later in the month and we've got a little bit more free cash on hand to uh, to do it. But her, her breath 
does get. It's not, it actually, it's not too bad, especially considering how old she is. Like, Lucy's nearly 14 now, or is 14. And, you know, when they get to that age, they've had a, they've had a long life. Their teeth have gotten a lot of mileage. And I've definitely known dogs to have worse dental hygiene uh, than her. But admittedly, she does not have the best breath. And so she could go for a good teeth cleaning. Um, but we did get these little... They're like little wipes. Little dental wipes that you can use to clean your dog's teeth. And we use those maybe like, I think like once a week, once every couple of weeks. And she doesn't seem to mind it too much. She actually, she, she, she will be like, oh, I don't want to have this happen to me. And then she'll kind of resign herself to it. And then after a while, she will try to eat the thing. Cause she's like, oh, actually this tastes kind of good. And she'll start trying to eat it off your finger. <laughs> oh dear. That's a funny dude. Gonna get a couple of removals. 20 removed. Wow, okay. Jesus. Yeah, I was gonna say 20 is a lot. Uh, yeah, wow. 20. I don't... Lucy hasn't... I think Lucy's had one tooth removal. So that probably gives you an idea of generally how good her, her teeth are. I think she's, the last time she went to the dentist, she's, she only got one removed. And it, bless her, the tooth that she had removed was like the middle one <laughs> in, in the front bottom row of her teeth. And so now she's got a little gap tooth in the front of her mouth. And ever since it got removed, <laughs> sometimes when she's sleeping, she has a little whistle. <laughs> She has a little whistle and it's the cutest thing ever, dude. Oh my god. Uh, Stanman, how you doing? Welcome in. If you have any questions about our mod pack, please feel free to ask. Happy to happy to answer any questions. We'll jump into RimWorld in a minute. I promise. Got some of those dental chews for the doggo. Bites him in half and goes full duck mode. <laughs> yeah, Lucy, Lucy gets a dentist stick every morning. That's like... Uh, when my partner leaves to go to work, she'll she'll uh, give Lucy a dentist stick, and then Lucy will have her dentist stick. She'll she'll chew on that for about you know ten minutes, and then she'll come back to bed and sleep with me until I get up, which is normally at the moment around you know nine thirty ten a.m. And uh, yeah, we have a nice little life together. It's very very comfy, very cute. Used a water additive, and that was awesome water additive interesting oh i see rachy okay yeah i don't know too much about greyhounds to be honest i've never had a greyhound and i've not really looked into it and, and learned much so yeah that makes sense uh hey meg yes lucy is adorable she is super cute lucy I've been telling them all about you. They know about your little gap tooth at the front. They know all about it. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a shoe. Thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. Lucy says thank you too. I'm just, she's, she's a bit sad right now because she's just had dinner. And she's getting settled in to have a little bit of a snooze next to me. And she's just like... Why am I up here now, Sean? This is unacceptable. Unacceptable. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the raid. Welcome in, Raiders. How you doing? Sub-average Joe. Welcome in. How was your stream? Thank you so much for bringing your community over. All right, down you go. Oh, good girl. Good girl. Oh, dear. You have a greyhound that's blind and he's great. That's amazing. I love that. Uh, Joe, thank you so much. Playing some Battletech. How was Battletech? Uh, but you also play uh, Blade and Sorcery, Skyrim, Hellspit Arena, Rimworld Kenshi, Ark, Seven Days to Die, Battletech, Warhammer 40k, 
Walking Dead and others. Amazing. What a lineup. Uh, if you want to tell us a bit more about yourself, Average Joe, I don't know if we've had the pleasure before, uh, but if you want to introduce yourself to the stream, please feel free to. We'd love to hear more about you and more about your stream. Uh, you're bullying some of the easier flashpoints. Very good. I've not, I have to confess, I, I've not played Battletech, so I don't really know too much about it. I have watched a little bit of it though, but... Uh, uh oh you've raided with frag girl we know frag girl we love frag girl uh i don't know if you're out there lurking away frag girl but uh it's great to hit great to see you i hope you've been looking after yourself yeah the raiders got to see lucy hey sassamafras good to see you welcome in yeah lucy lucy's very happy right what? i don't know where she's gone now hey lucy Let me go check on it. I'll be back in a second. Boil him, mash him, stick him in a shoe. Very sorry about that, chat. I I took Lucy out before the start of the stream, but she decided she needed to go again. So she had to go and trot around outside for a little bit. 
Uh, but yeah, I apologize. Welcome back. I'm sorry to hear that sub, uh, sub average Joe. I'll, I'll make sure to say hi to FG. Hey Kimasabe, how you doing? Welcome in. Zaza, good to see you too. Newest streamer, have a small community. Uh, my most popular games seem to be Battletech. Nice, very good. Do I still do shoeys? <laughs> I will never properly retire from doing shoeys. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we still, we still occasionally do shoeys. Not as much as we used to, admittedly. I've had to cut back a little bit, you know. I'm not as young as I used to be. Uh, hey Minor, good to see you. <laughs> Welcome in. Lucy's bloody gone again. There's no way she can need to go to the bathroom again. I'm sure she's probably just gone back to maybe finish her dinner, I don't know. Uh, let's load up our save game chat. We're 20 minutes into the stream and we haven't even properly jumped into our save file yet. At the end of last stream, we had a met cluster arrive at the edge of our base. Which is a little bit spicy. It's a little bit spicy. But we're doing our best. It's only a very small one, fortunately enough. So I'm not too not too stressed about this and i think with a little bit of luck we might be able to snipe out that unstable power cell and destroy the whole thing pretty damn quickly uh so we'll we'll see uh and in fact i might grab do we have somebody with maybe maybe we get you quack among us so let's let's see how you go can we outrange the inferno turret i'm not sure but we'll see. I, hey, Sarge, good to see you. I, I, yeah, I have to admit that last stream, the idea of some kind of cohesive reality escaped me. I lost the plot a little bit, so I apologize, chat. I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll be able to outrange that easily. In fact, if we come back to here and get behind full cover... I think with a guided shot, you should be able to, yeah, because guided shot doubles our range and it means that we don't miss for the duration. It's only enough for one volley, but, you know, we can do a lot with one volley. So let's, let's try and take out this, uh, let's try and take out this unstable power shell, uh, shell, cell. Okay. Not bad, not bad. Alright, let's go again with the guided shot. Oops, okay, it's uh, changed its target to the Inferno turret, which is not what I want. Let's try again. There we go. I mean, it killed everything but this Scorcher, which I'm not too happy about, actually. Uh, we'll use firing focus and guided shot again to try and take out this scorcher. See how this goes. Uh, this range isn't particularly wrong, long, so I'm going to use power leap here and jump out of range. So we can keep trying to fight a bit of a retreat here. Oh my god, what am I... Where's my... How is my left radius shattered? How did that happen? That's affecting my manipulation. There's nothing affecting my accuracy. I'm just surprised that I'm missing so much. Uh, we'll mix in a long jump here just because I want to keep some neural heat available just in case something else happens at the same time. Give ourselves a little bit of a margin for error. And there we go. All right, job done. Easy. Easily dealt with. We love to see it. Um, oh, actually, no, we need to, we need to take out this mech assembler as well to actually defeat that cluster. Job's not over yet. <sighs> You've been having some real issues with typing lately, Meg. 
I'm glad you got a laugh out of it, Sarge. Thanks, Tassimafras. It is, it is notorious, Meg. Yeah, you start, need to start doing, like, some, some digit, digit warming up exercises to give yourself the ability to type before you come into the stream. Are you interest? Uh, okay, Sarge. Point taken. <laughs> point, point taken. Uh, did I do that for both alerts? Let's take a look. No, I, I managed to get it for the actual command. If you type in exclamation mark add, it brings it up properly. I've just messed it up on the timer. <laughs> the timer. Are you interest chat? Are you interest chat? Dear, oh dear. That's, uh, that bodes well for the remainder of, uh, remainder of the stream. I'm just as bad as you. Oh no, Meg. Oh no. I'm far worse than you. Far, far worse. And I've been doing it for far longer as well. Your, your typo shenanigans are but a recent development. I've been, I've been like this, and Sarge can confirm this, for as long as anybody can remember. You mess with Drongo, you get the fiery knife right to the eye hole. And don't you forget it. Mods. Uh, wow, 5% interest, yeah. I mean, obviously it, it sucks sucks for people with home loans at the moment. That's, that's rough. Uh, for me, it's kind of good because I've got money in a interest bearing account and I think it's paying like 3% interest, which is the more, most interest I'm getting at. <laughs> I don't know. I, don't, I haven't actually looked exactly how much interest it is. I could actually probably look at my statements actually. that would tell me how much interest I'm getting on it uh, last month. I'll tell you. Not that. Statements. There we go. Latest statement was... 3rd of June. Oh, do I have like six monthly statements for this account? I must do. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, I'll get my next statement on the 3rd of December. Sigh. So okay. No. Well, I won't tell you exactly how much the interest rate is because I mean, I could go online and look at the website, but whatever. I don't care that much. <sighs> no worries, sub average Joe. Thank you so much for bringing your community over and saying hi. I really appreciate it. Take care. I mean, we could do that, Sarge, but this way is far more fun, wouldn't you agree? How you doing, Dan? How how goes Worm, dude? Seven months left before I'm paying full interest. I fixed most of my home loan at 1.89%, but uh, not for long. Yeah, so that's a big that's a really big problem at the moment in the finance industry. That's going to develop over the next two to three years, and that could really. From the modeling reports that I've read, uh, it could cause like worst. I think the worst case modeling scenario that I looked at me meant that house prices could uh, pull back by as much as 40%. Um, best case scenario, it, the modeling I think described maybe a two to 3% increase in prices 
And the reality is likely going to be somewhere in between the two. I would imagine, realistically, we would just see a, a flattening off and maybe a slight reduction in house pricing. Uh, but one of the really big... Um, one of the really big impacts in that uh, modeling that I was reading was the fact that a lot of Australians, I think nearly, I want to say like nearly a third of Australians have a mortgage, like the third of the total population have a mortgage. And a decent portion of those mortgages are on a fixed rate. And unlike in the US where you can do basically a fixed rate for the entire duration of your loan. So in the US, you can get a 30 year fixed rate loan. Uh, whereas in Australia, the standard is that you will typically have a fixed rate loan that will go for the duration of two to four years. Um, and that will get you a pretty competitive interest rate most of the time. Um, but the big problem is, is that as interest rates keep going up now, you've got a lot of families uh, and a lot of people that are already pretty overextended in terms of the amount of lending they've got. Um, and even the sensitization rates, because basically when a bank is calculating whether you can afford your repayments, they have to calculate your ability to pay off that loan, to service that loan. Uh, with a sensitized rate to take into account the possibility that over the course of the lifetime of the loan, the interest rates may go up. Um, and we're now at a point where a lot of people who would have gotten in uh, a mortgage two to three years ago would have got those mortgages uh, and approved for those mortgages in an environment where the sensitization rate was approximate to or lesser than the current interest rate or the projected interest rates that we might see in the next couple of years uh, and what that effectively means is that once people come off of their fixed rate expiry on their loans they're going to go from paying maybe one 1.9 percent to maybe like 2.5 percent interest on their home loans to paying five to six percent uh, on a variable um, or even a fixed rate uh, alternative. And that's a big jump. That can sometimes be the difference of nearly another third or even another half of your entire mortgage payment. And that's going to put a lot of uh, people into a pretty stressed cash flow situation, which obviously then impacts the rest of the, the market. And especially when it comes to property investors, because property investment in Australia is a really, really big thing um, because of a whole thing called negative gearing. Uh, there is a lot of tax incentives uh, for having investment properties. So typically people that are pretty well off and um, you know maybe middle-aged people to uh, towards retirement age will have typically you know two to three investment properties. Um, I don't think it's a good thing, by the way, just to clarify, I think that whole thing the fact that you can offset your income by claiming a reduce your taxable income by claiming the expenses of an investment property is bullshit negative gearing is bullshit um uh but the a lot of people that are in a tough cash flow position are going to be putting their properties back onto the market realistically and when a lot of properties go back onto the market, that's naturally going to mean that the house prices are going to reduce. Um, so yeah, it's a tough time. Interest rate, inflations, it's, uh, you know, it's a tough environment at the moment. It's a whole last thing. Uh, goes good just on the building blitz at the moment, but I'll be needing to make some mortar soon. Hell yeah, Dan. Yeah, it looks like you've been making some good progress. Um, luckily, I've put more than the minimum repayment each month to have a pretty decent buffer, but I think the next year we're going to have to be more careful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's good that you've been paying ahead, and uh, that does mean that you know, when you pay ahead, that does mean that you've got maybe a little bit more equity in the loan. If you need to refinance, chase a better rate, then that's definitely something I would always suggest 
to people obviously not financial advice but is a general uh, thing that I personally would look to do if I was in a similar sort of situation I'd be chasing the best absolute best interest rate where, wherever you can uh, at the moment because yeah you've got to try and get every every single bit of, uh, of, of every single dollar you can right now uh, my interest went up uh, an extra $500 a month. Jeez. There goes my Pokemon card money. Oh my, no, I'm so sorry. Smart Drongo looks like normal Drongo, and you don't realize Smart Drongo is there until it's too late. <laughs> uh, it's true. I'm just there lurking, lurking underneath the surface, Sarge. I'm just here to subvert your expectations. I'm gonna try and get a job soon and save as much as possible to go into the mortgage. I already have a bit that is classified as my redraw money. Yeah, that's fair. But you ain't touching that. Yeah, I think you gotta you gotta try and keep as much of a buffer as you can. Yeah, have a bit of a safety net. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 tough, Eliza. I think you know, I've definitely I was definitely one of the people that towards the start of the pandemic and everything like that, I was like looking at the economy and and how things were going. And I was like, man, this looks pretty bad. Um, and obviously there were a lot of really negative impacts, but it definitely wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. And what a, a, a lot of professional analysts thought it would be. Um, and even now, I think there's a lot of people that still think that it's going to be really bad. I don't know if it is going to be as bad as what some people are saying and what some analysts are saying obviously the real impact you know on the individuals uh is is you know case by case and i'm not trying to dismiss anybody's personal situation or anything like that i'm talking in a very broad sense about the overall uh economy and national economy of australia and uh i guess more globally as well um i don't know like i now kind of I'm a little bit of the impression that there's it just feels like a lot of the time that there's a there's a lot of government support in countries like Australia, the US and the UK for propping up financial institutions and things like that. So it's kind of hard to imagine that, you know, things are going to go that badly. Um, or at least be as as bad as some people are, are saying that it might be. So I don't, but I don't know. But yeah, ultimately, ultimately, the point there is that I've been wrong before for being too negative about the outlook of things, uh, and now I'm probably saying, oh well, maybe it's going to be a little bit more temperate and trying to temper my expectations to not be as negative, which means that I probably will be entirely wrong again and everything's going to go to shit. So, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Dan says, I've got an idea of some photo shoots to do a village recruitment page on the forum as well. Nice. That's awesome, Dan. I love that. I love that idea. That's super fun. Just, just look after animals. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, I, 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 uh, I'll just live vicariously through my, my best mate and his three children. Hey Reza, good to see you. Welcome in. Oh dear, Platty. Yeah, that's always, that's always a shitty situation to be in. We have a corrupt government here too. I wish everybody the best and please take care of your mental health. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent, Eliza. I didn't buy a four bedroom house just for nothing. That's fair, Meg. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Gandalf. Good to see you. Welcome in. When did I have three children? Excuse me. What, Dan? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Dear, dear. But yeah it's a it's a whole ass thing and ultimately like all of this stuff impacts everybody to a greater or lesser extent and i know not everybody's as interested in kind of economics and you know the impacts of this kind of stuff 
Uh, but it's something that I'm pretty passionate about and something that I, you know, I used to do for a living, uh, you know, things like financial analysis and, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's, it's something that I'm very, very interested in myself. So I, I do apologize for, uh, talking people's ears off about a topic, which is probably pretty dull to most people. I was going to live through my best friend and three kids. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, sure, Dan. I think it's cute, Dan, that you're like trying to, um, trying to bluff your way into my best friend role. Uh, that's, it's, it's adorable. It's really cute. I, I, you know, keep trying, buddy. Keep trying. <laughs> oh, dear get in line exactly exactly uh <laughs> hey loaf good to see you dalga has reached the biological age of seven and has experienced a growth moment she has demonstrated excellent personal growth and has boundless excitement for the coming months dalga hopes by learning about insect biology she can <laughs> end up helping others interesting so dalga can increase her passion for animals, crafting, social, mining, medical, or intellectual. So I think social is always going to be a good one. Medical is also solid, although she is currently incapable of that, but she won't be in the future. Uh, probably going into crafting because we've currently got one crafter, uh, but it wouldn't hurt to have another one. So having crafting, social, and medical, probably pretty solid. Mining is one that I'll probably look out for as well in the future. Animals I'm not too stressed about. And intellectual, we've already got a couple, several pawns in our colony that are very much intellectuals. Uh, we've got the neurotic trait, which is really nice because of the global work speed increase, 20%. Uh, we've got vengeful. She'll be elated at the news of the death of her rivals. Fast learner, which is pretty damn good. I'm, that's going to be a very strong contender. The global learning factor of plus 75% is super nice. Misandrist, eh, trigger happy, isn't great. Uh, the shooting accuracy debuff, I don't love. But for some weapons, it can be pretty good. And snob. Dalka believes, uh, believes, they, blink, be <laughs> believes they belong. I don't know why that was such a tongue tester. But tongue t I cannot speak, dude. I cannot speak. I've lost my ability to speak anymore. Bloody hell. <laughs> Boil him, mash him, stick him in a shoe. Well, Dan, don't worry. We'll play Rimworld and then another game later tonight. Uh, so, you know. Am I really a variety streamer or not? Uh, thank you for the follow as well, by the way. Dumb Drongo is back. <laughs> when you least expect it. It's like uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Dear, oh dear. Words are hard. Yeah, let's try that again. Dalka believes they belong in high society and loves nothing more than critiquing art and brushing elbows with royalty. Uh, I think, I think we take fast learner here. I mean, if we get like fast learner, if we get neurotic again as a trait, I'll definitely take that because neurotic with crafting and medical is super, super good. Uh, but fast learner will help us out in general. It is a really nice trait to get. So I'm happy about that. Boom. There you go, Dalka. Congratulations. Age seven. Uh, and chances are Reza could actually level up and become an adult tonight and become our first uh, graduate in a while. And let's not forget that baby Trav Manic was born last night and is currently already at uh, two quadrums. Uh, they may even reach three, or, three years old this evening and start their education at the academy. We'll see. Neurotic, Dan. Neurotic. Get your mind out of the gutter, honestly. Honestly. Uh, we need some recreation variety though, chat. So let's get some, let's get a couple of TVs made, shall we? There we go, perfect. How are you doing today, Reza? Congratulations on your, on your new job, by the way. 
I was very, very excited to read that in uh, Kiri's Discord earlier today. They may survive, Naxxar. They may very well survive against all of the odds. Against everything that I've done to them so far. Uh, you know what? I'm also going to finally get around to uh, arresting and converting Cat Blood Moon. Cat Blood Moon has been part of our colony for so long, but she's also not been part of our religion either. And we need to change that. We need to change that. So let's convert and... Uh, Let's get Quackamongus to drop a uh, conversion on her just to get things moving, you know. 96 down to 67%. Not too shabby. Jesus, Sarge. Calm down. You were impressed by my 2D Kiri impression. <laughs> we da. Oh, dear. That's too funny. Um, oh, there's a lynx hunting... Are they hunting deli monkey? What did it say? It is. Hunting deli monkey. Is there anybody nearby with a gun? No, Legacy is nearby with a sword, though. So let's get them together. And they'll be able to sort out this... This, uh, wildcat together. Oh, wild and wandered into my dining room. I knew they would leave, so I had my pawn trying to arrest them. They didn't want to be arrested. Oh no, Sarge. What a disaster. Okay, alright. Oh my god, Lynx? Lynx eye do quite a amount of damage, don't they? They are not messing around. How are you today, King Skink? What's going on? Uh, Blue Mary, can you do a little cheeky regrow limbs on Quackamongus, please? Because Quackamongus currently is our crafter, but they're missing, missing their left radius, which means that their manipulation is only half of what it could be. Uh, so we're going to, to try and regrow that part of their body. There we go. Regenerating. 107 hours. But we'll, we'll slowly see their crafting speed increase as their bo their arm grows back. Just slurps out of her, her uh, torso. Kiri is amazing and never would have found her without Drongo. Like here, it's just a stream you can listen to peacefully. That's really kind of you to say, Eliza. And I'm very glad that I was able to facilitate that. You know, I don't typically hold myself in particularly high regard in the, in the streaming space. But it makes me happy that I can introduce people to better streamers than me, if that makes sense. Uh, that's, a, that's very, very sweet. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad that you're enjoying Kiri's content. Hey, Rasmus. Good to see you. I'm doing very well today. How are you? The Ekatine with a Master Zeus Hammer is enough to one-hit a child with no armor. Bloody hell. Yeah, that makes sense, Sarge. It does not surprise me. Hay Fever's playing up, and then Tummy's upset. <laughs> the baby's super adorable, though, so it balances out. I'm glad to hear that Babu is is being super cute and helping to take your mind off of those other more sucky things. Somehow this year, even though it's been a bit more of a wet spring, which normally means that my hay fever is going to be pretty bad, uh, my hay fever this year so far has been pretty mild, which has been a massive relief. Uh, and it was last year as well, and I was fully expecting this year to be more of the, uh, to be, I, I felt like I was overdue to have a really bad hay fever year, so, uh, it's been, so far it's been pleasant, but maybe, maybe it's just gearing up, it's taking a little bit of time to wind up for me. Drongo is peaceful to listen to most of the time, how dare, Meg, how dare. <laughs> Great, perfect. Thanks. Thanks, chat. 
Hey, Tim. Good to see you. Welcome in. How are you today, Tim? How's your week going? Hey, Raptor. Hello there. Welcome in. Yours has been bad this week. Okay. Maybe it's working its way up from the south to the north, Raptor. But it's good to see you, dude. Uh, sending big hugs your way. Um, yeah, I hope you're looking after yourself. The Greeks were onto something. Concrete the shit out of nature. <laughs> what, what a take. I couldn't agree more. Uh, no, no, no. What? What am I saying? No, I, I could not disagree more. The opposite. The opposite of agreeing. I could not disagree more. Vic is copying it for Poland at the moment. Okay. Too late. <laughs> disagree. <laughs> no, Dan. How dare you? How dare you, Dan? I can't believe. I can't believe you've done this to me. <laughs> Last week off before you start the new job on the 14th. I love to hear it, Tim. What, uh, if you don't mind me asking, Tim, what have you been working on? Or has it just been purely whatever the heck you're feeling like doing? Like, have you been, have you been doing some, uh, doing some 40k stuff? Or have you been playing some games? Or have you just been trying to chill and watch some Twitch streams and just take a, a bit of a breath before, before the new job gets underway? You wake up in hay fever agony too. Uh, normally, I, I'm really bad. Like, normally it gets like 4 or 5 a.m. And I'll be woken up and I will not be able to get sleep uh, back to sleep until like probably like 10 a.m. And that's kind of my normal spring experience. Of course, though, once when I was working full time, that meant that I would wake up most days at 5 a.m and then just not get to sleep anymore. And I would be so tired by the end of the day. So spring was hellish. And I think the last really bad hay fever year that I had was 2019. Or maybe it was 2020 actually. It was a while ago though. So I'm, I, that's why I'm like very cautious. Cause I feel like I'm overdue. But at the moment I'm really enjoying it because it means that I can like right now, I'm streaming with my window wide open and just letting the cool air drift in instead of having it blocked up all day. It's currently a very comfortable 18 degrees Celsius in here with a, a very slightly cool breeze. It is like the optimal temperature and I'm just enjoying it for everything that it's worth right now because... There fully well could be a day very soon where I won't be able to enjoy it. And I'll be trying to make my house as sealed up and as uh, draft proof as possible to prevent any pollen from getting in. <laughs> There's been a lot of news around Melbourne this week about local councils not doing mowing and it's setting off everybody's hay fever. The pollen counts are woeful. A lot of councils are conceding defeat trying to even mow with the wet grass i see okay yeah raptor interesting i imagine it must be a similar situation here because we've had so much rain over the past past two to three weeks past month month and a half uh it, i don't i do not remember a time where where i live in new south wales looked this green it has been a very long time, probably at least 20 years since I saw it looking this green out here. <clears throat> There's so much pollen, you can literally see it in the air at times. Oh God, that's always the worst. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Platty. Oh no. Oh, that sucks, Tim. I'm sorry to hear that train wreck of a friendship group drama uh, yeah that always that always sucks but i'm sorry i'm sorry to hear that but finish mr wise and uh on to the next thing hell yeah oh dude i love the expanse i mean i like 
I don't mind sh slows that are uh, shows that are a bit of a slow burn. So I was like immediately hooked on the expanse and I was like, I was fully invested from day dot. Uh, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, um, but you know, like my favorite sci-fi of all time is Battlestar Galactica. And that's very much like a show that is not about like so much about like cool sci-fi stuff and action all the time, although it does have that stuff. It's more of a, a slow space drama that has like, it's more about the people rather than the sci-fi-ness of it all. Uh, and I really enjoy those sorts of shows. And I think The Expanse is kind of in the same vein that it's, a, it's a, more about the characters and the character development than about action. Uh, and I, I really enjoy that. Oh, rough. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Raptor. Man, having a having an, a car with aircon was such a game changer for me because for the longest time, like I, it wasn't until I got my current car that I had a, a working air conditioner. Like no other car that I had had a. Well, actually, so two of the cars that I had did have air conditioning systems, but they didn't work. Uh, in the sense that they would blow air out at you, but it would be the air that the ambient temperature was. Uh, so if it was hot, you were just getting hot air blown on you. And at that point, it's like, well, why even bother having like the air con system <sighs> wheeze some hot air at you? You might as well roll the, the windows down and be blasted by the hot air instead. And uh, that's what that's what I did. So having a having a working aircon was like such a game changer for me. Oh, your car's covered in it, sticky pollen. That's why I'm glad I have a garage now. Am I old or the voice voice audio levels too quiet in season one? Hmm, interesting question. I don't know. I'd have to go. I don't remember thinking that, Tim. But may, maybe you are just old. I don't know. Hey, Kiri. Good to see you. Welcome in. We were saying very lovely things about you earlier, Kiri. It's good to see you. Um, we were saying about how lovely you are and how entertaining you are on Twitch. That's fair, Meg. It's always a shame when it gets to that point where you've got to take that step back, but I'm proud that you did that. I think that's an important growth milestone. Hey, Dezo, too much accent in these series? Really? I love the accents in The Expanse. Especially the belter, the belter slang and the, the belter language and accent. I think it's great. Uh, I wanted more of it, if anything. You had to watch with subtitles on. Maybe I do actually watch almost every TV show ever with subtitles on, regardless of whether I can understand it or not. So maybe that's why... I did maybe maybe that's why I didn't remember thinking it was a bad mix. I don't know. Hey Blue Mary, good to see you. You enjoyed Battlestar when it came out. I wonder how it holds up on a rewatch. I mean, if you like it as much as we, it is timeless. It is absolutely timeless that show. I recently rewatched it with Alistair and Twiggy. Um at least the the final couple of seasons cuz they started watching it without me. And then one day I was talking about how much I love BSG and they're like, oh, we're actually watching it at the moment. Do you want to watch it with us? And I was like, sure. Um, and man, I it's great. It is so great. It still holds up to this day. Hey, Smoking Kitten Hippie, welcome in. Good to see you. Mm. Well, that's a, new, that's a really important realization, Tim that and a really tough one to reconcile with um so good on you uh and yeah best best of luck working through that because it's not easy bel de loda don't mess with the aqua it's good i love i love the belter accent it's so good i'm glad he got through that meg yeah I'd like the learning without the pain next time. Yeah, but the learning without the pain means that you don't really remember it that well. 
it's a hard truth of life that often the most memorable lessons are the ones that hurt us the most, you know? I think they call it character building or something like that. Or maybe just trauma, I'm not sure. Hey Razzlin, good to see you. How is the Psy Focus mod? A bit too much. Um, I'm really enjoying this, the Psy Power mod. I think it's really, really fun. Uh, I think it's defi there's definitely aspects of it which are very overpowered. Uh, and we've experienced a few bugs with it. But in the, I, in the essence of fun and enjoying the gameplay, it is so much fun. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's good to see you, Razzlin. Yeah, it's called trauma or character building. Trauma building. Okay, yeah, split the difference. Why not? Okay, uh, so Deli Monkey's leveled up. They're on the Harmonist tree, and we've now unlocked a location swap. Pawns with two precise single-use skip gates between the caster and the visible target, allowing them to trade places. Spawns two precise single-use skip gates. Cool. Single-use skip gates. That sounds like a fun time, dude. I can imagine that being some pretty interesting strats being made available to us with that at our disposal. I'm, I'm looking forward to giving that a try, actually. I think that'll be pretty fun. Boy, we are still getting the old heat stroke, huh? Not ideal. Can I have a little less character building in my next three years, next few years of life and a bit more character editing? <laughs> Reallocate some stats. I've already got enough character. I don't need any more. In fact, yeah, let's just reallocate some of that sass into like productivity. How does that sound? I'm down for that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good idea, right, Kiri? It's a it's a great idea. You got vanilla or Psy expanded after seeing it here, and I'm loving all the new Psy cast and the different gameplay they allow. I think that's the thing that I'm really enjoying as well, is that, that it allow, it gives you so much freedom to workshop these really inter interesting and uh, out-of-the-box ideas for defenses and stuff like that. I'm looking forward to kind of experimenting with that a little bit more as this, as this playthrough progresses. Uh, we'll be doing more and more of that. And yeah, I, I'm I'm really excited by it. But there is no doubt about it that it is overall No. Yeah. Friendly Kitten is here. Never give up. Never surrender. Hey Friendly Kitten. Good to see you. Welcome in. Uh there is no question that it is in at times pretty broken and unbalanced. I was supposed to put points into productivity. Yeah, tell me about it, Sarge. Tell me about it. Yeah, I'm doing well, Kitten. I'm doing very well, thank you. I hope you're having a, a good day. I hope the dentist yesterday went okay. And uh, you're having a, a nice, productive day. Uh, Quackamongus has now fully regrown their arm, which is nice, or their left radius. And that means they're now back at 100% manipulation. So that's good news. And it does look like with that extra manipulation now, we're starting to catch up on all of the, all of the clothing and stuff that we're missing previously. So there's a lot of shirts that we need to be, that we need made. But we are nearly at 19 crafting. Quackamongus is an absolute beast, dude. Absolute beast. I love that for us. What do you mean soloing a raid with a chain bolt is unbalanced? <laughs> True. Yeah, Blue Mary. I mean, that, that was one of the things is that, yeah, the side power casting in vanilla is kind of cool. 
but the fact that you don't really have much of a sense of really structured progression throughout it and a way to kind of really focus on it you really just have to wait for trade caravans to come past or trade ships to come past with the particular power spell that you want it can be a little it's i don't think it's the most interesting way to progress it and admittedly you know just meditating isn't the most compelling and challenging way to progress down a tree but it is nice to have a progression tree and a skill tree to flesh out there is just something very satisfying about that that type of mechanic i think yeah well hopefully it settles down nice and quickly for you kitten yeah your irl rimworld traits are a combo combo of things like industrious and lazy so it cancels out and i remain stressed most of the time <laughs> oh i feel that i feel that that is true aph yeah yeah and, and there is there is stuff that is still challenging like we've definitely like we've nearly wiped this colony several times despite having psi powers at our disposal you know there is still definitely an element of challenge although admittedly the last the last stream or so has been pretty easy going for us like i think we cruised through i think the met cluster that landed there we got the manhunters to destroy that and then the enemy raid was just like eh whatever I think there was actually some some cobras left from the manhunting pack that actually took on the enemy raid as well. We did that without too much issue, and then the mech cluster, ne next cluster, next mech cluster was pretty pretty straightforward for us. Ah, oh, nice blue Mary. Yeah, berserk berserk pulse is pretty useful. Hey Mel, welcome in. Good to see you. How are you today? Traveler's shape desired. The way requires you to have a traveler's shape in your colony as expectations are high uh, expectations are high or higher. Okay, so we need to make a sculptor's bench, which we already have, and we need to make a uh, a traveler's shape. So we'll make a couple of those and we'll make them out of jade. Because we've got quite a bit of jade now, and I think it'll look nice. Uh, but Delhi Monkey is 11 artistic, so we've got a decent chance that we'll get something somewhat serviceable out of this. And Delhi Monkey is reasonably high priority on the old art scale. And uh, off they go. Beautiful. Delhi Monkey on the job. You got out of bed for me? Why would you do that? That was an unwise decision. Also, it's like 8 p.m. What do you mean? <laughs> I thought yesterday was a just chatting stream. I mean, every stream here is a just chatting stream. Let's be real. We're, we're out here doing our best, but still. Uh, Muglishen, now that you've given birth, we do have a couple of lungs here for you. Install left lung, install right lung. And let's give you blue medicine for it. Because Muglishin is one of our starting pawns, actually. And they've had asthma since the very start. And now we finally get to... Now we finally get to the address that hey lottie welcome in good to see you i hope you're well today that makes sense uh oh we failed the surgery are you kidding me <sighs> damn it dude all right uh well we better better not waste the next lung let's use glitter world for it we do have some glitter world medicine Sorry, I'm going to have to take a lung from you. I apologize. Sorry. Just, we, just, we, just, we need it right now. Also, wait, did we just mess up that surgery and then just go to sleep? It's <laughs> a bold choice. Surgeon's just like, eh. 
You know what? I ain't stressed about it. Uh, oh no. Cat Blood Moon has staged a prisoner's breakout. Hey, Angry Dragon. Zero. Zero. This is a zero war crime stream. Have I tried out the growth of that? Not yet, next up. Not yet. You, you, well, you know what they say about assuming, Mel. Cure asthma with this one simple trick that doctors hate. Take her legs off. I did, Gandalf, I did. Uh, I don't know how we're going to address this because Kat's one of our colonists. So I don't know what it means when... when you're incapable of violence. I mean, we could melee attack. Do I have any psi powers that could deal with this problem for me? I guess we could use the paralytic pulse. Oh, no, no, no. Don't, don't, don't shoot cat. Don't shoot cat. Yeah, let's use paralytic pulse. Oh, cat. Run away. Run away. Blue Mary, go, go, go. Okay, let's do a, a long jump here to try and close the distance. Okay, uh... Now, where's the paralytic pulse? Is that it? Word of fear. Uh, consume bodies, life rot, par paralytic pulse. There we go. No escape today for you, cat. Despite your best efforts. Now, Pixel Hound, can you f please tend to Marglishin? That would be. That would be very, very handy of it. I wonder if Malto Kibri was the one who did the surgery before. Because they do only have eight. Eight surgical skill, medical skill. Hey, Baku, good to see you. They do, Draken. This is our Vampire Academy. The Merciless Academy. Oh, Baku, you want to know what's even more broken about that pulse? It works on mechanoids. There you go. You're welcome. It works on mechanoids. That was close to the door, it was. Yep. Yep. I've changed your life, Baku. I've changed your life. You're welcome. Uh, oh god, no. Don't, we don't want to do glitter world medicine for this. No, 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 no. Let's try again. We should take off Pixel Hound's peg leg and just regrow a standard leg, shouldn't we? Does Pulse work through walls? I believe it does, yeah. Oh, come on. What are you doing? No, 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 Where are you going? Bed rest is priority one. But you're gonna go get a meal. Whatever. Uh, no, I've had this shirt for a while. I've had this shirt for a while. I got this uh, at TwitchCon EU earlier this year. They, they gave these out to all of the Twitch partners that attended. What is that person's doctor priority? They're not doctoring. <laughs> They, are, they do not have a doctor priority. They're going to get a meal. Instead of resting. So, whatever. It's fine. Marglishin's going to have a bite to eat. They're going to learn their lesson. And life will continue. Oh no. Never mind. They're not going to go rest. They're going to go breastfeed... Seems like a bad decision. It's a bad, bad decision. There we go. All right. 
Let's try this again, shall we? Pixel Hound. I'm going to... Oh, Melter Kibri's on it. Okay, Melter Kibri, go, go on. Thank you. Thank you. Alright, finally. I've tended to that, that wound. We'll wait for the blood loss to wear off before we try attempt to try and that... Oh no, hang on. Walter Kibri's going to try the surgery again. Let's suspend that for the time being. We'll get that out of there. Uh, and speaking of failed surgeries, Dolphin has failed their surgery. Ooh. That's not great. That's not great. Carson, welcome in. If you have any questions about our mods, please feel free to ask. <laughs> I know, right, Meg? It's concerning. But I suppose it is in keeping with the, the vampire... Vampire Academy theming, I suppose. I don't know. Have we tried giving someone tr blood transfusions? You know what? I forgot that was a thing that we can do. I forgot that was a thing that we can do because we can kind of totally go uh, blood transfusion. Boom. And then they'll come over, use one of the hemogen packs. Look at that. Good old Dalka. Thank you. We'll grab a, a hemogen pack and then that'll get rid of the blood loss. Boom. There we go. Problem solved. Yeah, thanks for the reminder. I forgot that that was a thing that we can do now. Uh, let's go ahead and try and install this lung now. Uh, Pixel Hound, I'm going to get you to prioritize the operation here for us. Thank you. Uh, we do, APH. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um... Yeah, we've been using the regrow limbs to to good good effect. Don't you worry, we're all over it. Okay, don't mess it up this time, please, Pixel Hound. That would be what? what? I thought that was the... I thought we started the operation. Okay. Alright, sure. Uh, well, there's one lung taken care of. Let's uh, install another lung, shall we? That was the blood? No, we already applied the blood. That was applied by uh, Malto Kibri. Keep up, APH. Pay attention. <laughs> the union mandated mid-surgery break. Oh, of course. I forgot about that one. Of course. Oh, of course. You're right, APH. You're, you're right. What we actually did was put in the blood. No, of course. What? Now we've decided, decided that we're going to feed a... A meal to them? Why is it not doing the surgery? That's an interesting interaction. Where? Yeah, we're using Glitter World meds because we've failed using the blue meds. Vegemite Roast Chook. What? You right down there? Little fat dog just like scrapping around on the carpet. Okay, well, there you go. Problem solved. Don't know exactly what those multiple detours were about, but we've, we've done it, chat. We've done it. What's a chook? Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so chook is Australian for chicken. It's an Australian word for chicken. 
Hey Hibiki, hey Don, welcome in. Yeah, I would I would be I'd give it a go. A Vegemite roast chook. Give it a crack. Maybe if we if we get to seven hundred subs we'll do a we'll do a Vegemite chook tasting on stream. How does that sound, chat? I'll get a whole ass roast chicken and we'll try it on stream. We'll give it a taste test. There we go. We got the traveler's shape. This piece depicts Quackamongus inscribing her name on a duster with a gleam in her eye. Quackamongus lifts the duster seemingly without effort. The scene takes place on the outskirts of the, an encampment. The overall composition is focused. This portrayal refers to Quackamongus completing work on a duster on the 14th of August, 5507. Very nice. Alright, let's pop that in there. Exactly, Valk. That's my thinking. Anything for the content, exactly. Uh, we reached that, Mel. Yeah, so I've I've ordered the hot sauce box. Actually, I got sent a tracking email the other day because they confirmed that they'd finally sent it. Uh, so I ordered the hot sauce box from Hot Ones, and we're going to do a taste test of that, hopefully later on this month. I don't know how long it's going to take to get here, but hopefully not too long. Uh, where was it? They sent me a, a tracking link. Track my order. It's loading. Okay, it is on its way. It's currently in Reno. Reno in Nevada? <laughs> don't ask me why it's in Reno in Nevada. I don't know if that's like a distribution hub for them. But it's not in Australia, so it's safe to assume that it's still at least a couple of weeks away. Isn't Vegemite just really salty? So a salty chook. Uh, a salty, yeasty chook, Hibiki. It'd be really good. I think it'd be nice. It's a cheesy Vegemite stuffed chicken. What? A cheesy... Hang on. Coles... Veggie, veggie, you might chicken. Coal setting hot chook in stores across Australia. A roast chicken coated in Vegemite for $13. I'm not seeing a lot here. Cole's, Cole's scientist was so preoccupied whether they could, they didn't stop to think whether they should. Oh, with cheesy stuff. You're right, with cheesy stuffing. Damn, son. Hell yeah, dude. Cheesy stuffing. I kind of want to try it. Yeah. All right, chat. Lock it in. If we hit 700 subs, we'll, we'll get one of those and we'll taste it live on stream. And I'll tell you, I'll give you the whole lowdown on whether it's actually any good. Yeah, so do I, Raptor. So do I. That doesn't sound like a sub challenge. It sounds like dinner. Yes, <laughs> it is, Hibiki. Not everything I eat on stream has to be absolutely 100% disgusting. He put Vegemite in a bloody cake. And you know what, Sarge? It was great. It was great. Uh, yeah, about seven pounds, noobish. Yeah, correct. Hey, Arch. Good to see you. Welcome in. Oh, yeah. 
That is a. Tr I'll have to scout it out whether they've got it uh, where I am in a, where I am in New South Wales. I think they'll they'll usually have it. I mean, they've got roast chooks there, so hopefully they have that stuff too. Uh, let's go into moisture pumps, get them researched next, because I want to moisture pump this area so I can clean this up a little bit. It's not cheap, but it's not expensive either. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like, Coles and Woolies roast chooks are legitimately really good. Like, you're getting a decent feed for that money. True, Mel. True. Hey, Bree. Good to see you. Hello. New South Wales? Question mark. Yeah, it's a state in Australia, like Victoria or Queensland or Despair. Uh, yeah. Bur South Wellian hemispheres apart. <laughs> it's true. Uh, <laughs> can we get a shout out for Arch and for Bree as well, please? Thank you. Uh, I was watching Bree play some RimWorld last night after the stream ended. That was a good time. Despair, really? No, no. Despair is not the name of uh, an Australian state or territory. Uh, that was what is known as a joke. You may or may not be familiar, Twitch chat, but now you are. You're welcome. Our Woolies open near a charcoal chicken shop. Oh God, I love a good charcoal chicken. Back in the day, I, me and my best mate, we used to live like just up the road from a charcoal chicken shop. And that was like our hangover, our hangover meal on Sundays was we'd go down, we'd walk down the road. Uh, and it was like literally like we'd walk down the hill to this charcoal chicken shop and we'd get a, a, a chips and gravy and maybe some charcoal chicken. And oh, mate. You get it in those like styrofoam containers. You'd be walking home with a, a plastic fork and like a Gatorade, eating your chips and your your chicken. It was it was sublime, a sublime experience. Joke, yeah, exactly. More shout outs is more good, friendly kitten. Ah, uh, let us know how you go, Sassamafras. And it has chicken salt? Wow. Lucky you. I've heard chicken chicken salt can be a bit tricky to track down in, in New Zealand. Have I ever seen lemon tits chicken? The fuck did you... What the fuck did you just call me, Bree? Yeah! How dare you? Uh... <laughs> Uh, Untold Sitcom. Thank you for the raid. Welcome in. Culture Jelly. Untold Sitcom. Coming in with the Ruthie Raid. How was your stream, Ruthie? Playing some L.A. Noir. Uh, oh, Arch. Is this your fault, Arch? Uh, I don't believe we've had the, uh, the honor. But welcome in, Untold Sitcom. It was okay. Fair enough. I'm, I guess okay is better than bad. Uh, but thank you so much for bringing your community over. I really appreciate it. I don't believe we've had the pleasure before previously. So if you'd like to introduce yourself and tell us about your stream and, and what you're about, uh, then that would be that would be very much appreciated. We'd, we'd love to hear more about you. Uh, if you're coming over from, uh, I assume it's Ruthie. Uh, their stream, then uh, welcome. I'm Bloody Drongo. I'm a variety streamer from Australia, and we like to play all kinds of different games here. Although, at the moment, I am in the pits of a RimWorld addiction. Uh, it's always been a game that we've played a lot of on this stream, but with the release of Biotech, I am I am firmly about RimWorld. Uh, so, it's a whole time. Uh, Jersey Griffin, how you doing? Good to see you. All right, sounds sounds good, Sarge. It's a deal. Uh, Ruthie is awesome. They play games and solves crimes, and they're amazing. Got it, Arch. Thank you. I love Rimwald. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming over, Ruthie. 
I am I am excited about uh, about Dwarf Fortress. Yeah, we we were talking about this the other day, and I think I am going to give Dwarf Fortress another chance because I have played it previously and I found it a little bit hard to get back into once I put it down, just because it's so obtuse to actually play. But I absolutely adore reading stories about Dwarf Fortress and what it's all about. And I would love to give it another opportunity to experience some of those stories myself. Yeah, 6th of December. Very, very soon. <laughs> yeah, there's no way in heck either Arch or myself would not know about the Dwarf Fortress release. Yeah, Blind has been... is very exciting. Understandably so. In the pits of despair. Hang on. Can we just rewind two seconds? Sorry. Just to go back prior to that raid. Because Bree called me a lemon tit chicken. What does that even mean? Is this something that I'm going to get in trouble for Googling? Lemon. Lemon tits. Chicken. Oh, so this is a... Oh, is it lemon breast chicken? Is that what this is meant to be? Is that, are you just trying to be cute with me, Brie? Is that what, what is this what that's, this blah, blah, blah. Lemon chicken, is that what it is? Or is this like a, is this something else? I don't know. Chicken milk is really hard to find. <laughs> okay. Sure. You put lemon under the chicken skin. Huh. Okay. Uh, apparently we're disregarding our, or disrespecting our traveler's shape. So let's go ahead and build some columns so that we're no longer being disrespectful. Uh, we need four of them. So here we go. Boom. 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 And boom. There we go. That'll be fine. I like how this is now the point where Bree disappears off into the ether. Just like, hey, Drongo. Lemon tits chicken and never heard from them again. No idea. Our Googles are different. I DM'd you. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, Brie, what is this? <laughs> What is this? I... Is this... <laughs> you know what? I just worked out what this is. I understand. Yeah, you've got the half lemons under the chicken skin. Boy, boy, does that look sussy though. Uh, wow. Um, let me, let me just show you, chat, what Bree just sent to me. Uh... <laughs> So you cut the lemon in half and then you put it under the chicken skin and then you roast it. <laughs> well, there you go. The, the more you know. Thank you for educating me, Bree. I feel like a better and more complete, complete person. That does actually look like a really well-cooked chicken, though. It looked well-seasoned. Oh, dear. <laughs> Don't question... <laughs> question mark me, chat. Stop that. Don't... Yeah, see, look, I can do it, too. I can do it, too. It's mouth-watering. Bree... Bree... <laughs> I can't say that. I can't say that. Anyway, moving on. Ah, oh, goodness. 
Goodness me. Um, now. Yeah. Succulent. <laughs> Why is Trav sad? What's wrong? High expectation, your parent is happy, and you've got an excellent crib. Everything's going for you. Uh, but there is a, a fox hunting Reza. Oh god, Reza's a kid. I forgot. Hang on. Uh, this is bad. Uh, this is bad. Wait, what? Why is it not... Why is the camera not adjusting to where my people are? That's weird. Uh, Quackamongus, gonna get you to speed boost. And I need you to come down here and help out Reza. Go, go, go! Oh my god. Oh my god. <gasps> Reza, you absolute legend! Holy cow, dude. Reza, let's go. This is like a coming of age thing. It's a coming of age thing. He was never a man until he killed the fox toe to toe. Amazing. <laughs> Mel, my mouth always waters when I see a good pair of lemons. Unbelievable. Nobody messes with Reza, that's right. Oh, Reza could cast Paralysis Pulse. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're, you're correct. Yeah, we could have used that if we got into, into some more trouble. But turns out we didn't need it. Just Reza and a knife. Gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with this fox. Lemons is an anagram for melons. You know what? You're right. I never thought about it, but you are 100% correct. Good. Good. I'm glad. <sighs> yeah, and yet still not as many as I would like, Sir Botchalot. Not as many as I would like. All right, I think everybody's now got the clothing they need, which is nice for once. And Traveler's Shape. This one, this carving bears the artwork of an abstract rendering of community. A beggar off to one side seems to symbolize triumph. Very nice. I like the skulls on them. I like the fact that this one's like representing one person this one's representing community and they're <laughs> and they're just skulls i love it it's perfect uh there's a camera feature under options graphics yeah but i haven't changed that so i don't know why it would have changed between save sessions uh Smooth camera jumps. It's affecting how my camera moves when I double click on a pawn. When enabled, the camera will quickly pan when focusing on a new location. When disabled, the camera will jump instantly. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, is, this a, is this a new update or a new setting? What about if I re-allow it? But thank you. That's very helpful. I appreciate it. What was it under? Interface? Graphics. Oh yeah, apparently it just does not, does not really work. Huh, okay, alright, well, that's fine. Uh, we'll just turn that off then. Thank you, perfect. There we go. It's a new setting in 1.4, gotcha. Camera Plus might be interfering with it. It's interesting that it's only interfering with it now and it hasn't been in previous play sessions because we've been playing, you know, quite a bit since 1.4 came out and that's today's the first time that that setting has uh, had that effect. But I'm glad that we can fix it. That's the, that's the main thing.
Kat, how close are you to reconsidering your commitment to your false religion? We're, we're getting pretty close. We can actually probably drop a convert onto Cat now and get you them the rest of the way. There we go. Quackamongus has converted Cat Blood Moon to the way. All right, now we can release them and they can rejoin the colony. Part of the ship, part of the crew. We love to see it. Uh, wait, what? The number of cannibals in my colony has reached three. I can now assign the role of cannibal clairvoyant to one of your colonists. Wait, what? Rituals of cannibalism will be brought out. Okay. I... Why has this now become a thing? Because we had them as part of our colony previously. It's interesting. Uh, oh, wait, what? No! As with all big communities... Ugh. Nevsol, Malto Kibri, and Reza have decided to join a new ideology. Ugh. God, I hate schisms. That's annoying. <sighs> okay. All right. Well, Nevsol, Malta Kibri, and Reza are going to need to be re-educated. Re Do they have any special needs? Shrine of eating, obscure shape, no cannibal clairvoyant, and no cannibal... Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. Oh god, sorry, I forgot the blue mi Oh, is that is that bear now eating the fox? I think it is. Okay, it's fine. Oh no noodles. <laughs> uh Malto, where are you? You're the first. I think if I arrest this person and take them out of the colony pool, then that means that, yeah, it deactivates the cannibalism rituals for us. So that's good. Okay, let's try and convert them. That's rough. That is rough. <laughs> You're the ringleader. Get in the fridge. Oh dear, it's a, it's a rough old life out here, I tell you what, it's a rough old life, but we're doing the, the, the darndest we can, we're doing the very best we can. Won't it keep happening though? I mean, yeah, it's possible that other schisms will occur, but... There's not really much that we can do about that without turning off the setting. And I think you can turn that setting off. But, yeah. Should be right. Should be right. I'm not, I'm not stressed about it. Oh yeah, Cat, you can grab your gun back as well. We'll allow that. Hey, little sea bass, how you doing? Yeah, Rimworlds is a very fun game. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, Cat's about ready for a death rest, so let's go ahead and get you to start that. And a shield user has a... Ah, sh Yeah, okay, there we go. Put that shield belt back into, into storage. Hi, Reek. Uh, welcome in. <laughs> Is
Is this some kind of uh, joke? And I say, my name's not Jake. And then you're like, oh, yeah, but Jake my balls. Jake my balls out. Or something like that. Is it like a, is it like one of those jokes? <sighs> Won't that anger the colony when it's not collectivist? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. No. Oh, their name's Jake. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. That makes more sense. Okay. Thanks, Jake. I went to school with a few different Jakes, but I appreciate that. Yeah, lucky, you know, lucky I'm so hulkingly handsome. It's true. Uh, <laughs> fucking hell. Actually dense. Jake. Uh, oh my God, Jake, look at these balls. <laughs> True though, true. It's a small world, it is. Hey Soul Wiki. Uh we've been selling off our human skin pretty pretty regularly. It's been it's been doing pretty good. It's been doing pretty good. It's uh it's fueled our economy in a very positive way. Uh, is there anything that I want from these people? Maybe if they have some better guns, we could perhaps purchase something. Oh my god, is that a handheld Gatling gun? A heavy weapon meant as a portable turret, dismantling from its base and now carried by strong individuals. Power armor or a powered exoskeleton suit. Despite this, the gun still requires hand cranking, hand cranking to reach maximum fire rate and now has a limited ammo supply. Okay, limited ammo sounds kind of kind of like a scam, dude. I'm not interested in that. Do they have anything else? Outrageous. What do you mean? We've been making uh <laughs> we've been making chairs out of human leather as well. If that makes you feel any better. No, there's literally nothing here that they have that I want. It's all pretty, pretty middle of the road. Yeah, I think we just sell that stuff, take the money, and we're done. You know, to tell the truth, Rasmus, I'm not overly impressed with either of them. I think they're both very niche weapons, but I don't think they're that powerful. At least not with the setup that we're running. Look, you'll just have to see, Sir Botchalot. I, I, I don't think I can actually give away those trade secrets. That's right. We did complain about the price of human skin the last time that we sold some. That is true. Well, I mean, look at this. Look, look, we got an armchair. We got a baby crib. It's an armchair and a footstool. Job done. Easy. Complex caper. We've learned of an ancient complex nearby that has some ancient treasure. Mm. We could think about doing one of those at this stage, I think. I'm not too stressed about it. I'm I'm pretty happy with kind of plugging along with 
our colony as it is because we are making slow but sure progress in terms of restocking on bricks getting back on top of that we've got our clothing situation mostly under control finally chat's always at least like three seconds away from getting creepy lottie it's just an unfortunate fact of playing room world uh quack among us i'm going to do i'm gonna so i've been instead of putting levels into another path i've just been upgrading uh our psycaster stats with quack among us and so far it's paying off our current neural heat limit is 296 if we upgrade again it goes to 338 neural heat that is massive uh it also increases our psychic sensitivity as well and our uh, recovery rate our meditation gain our psi focus cost factor like all of that stuff it just it's we're just going to be the most o op thing ever uh maglishin has leveled up and we're putting levels into warlord the next level we'll go for is power leap which drastically augments the caster's legs feet and spine to be able to leap great distances and land without injury the distance improving with the user's psychic sensitivity boom and we'll go into firing focus once uh not firing focus we'll go into blade focus because uh maglashan is a melee fighter which psychically augments muscle fibers, ligaments, and joints in the caster's arms, doubling their melee attack speed for roughly two minutes, depending on their psychic sensitivity, which is pretty damn good. Did I look at the art for the alternative... on the alternative backgrounds for the side cast? Did I look at the art? Like, the cards? Are you talking about this stuff? Was there something in particular that stood out to you? Because, I mean, it's pretty nice. On the left side. The checkbox on the left. Oh. Oh, I see. I mean, I guess that's kind of cool. I like it a lot less, though. I like this a lot less. I think these look much more rimworldy, much more in keeping. These are kind of, I don't know. They feel like a bit much. Yeah, cool. Yeah, no, all good, friendly kitten. Thank you for letting me know. I, I hadn't clicked on that. I hadn't bothered clicking on that yet. But uh, yeah, good to know. Yeah, exactly, Valk. Yeah, I feel the same. I feel the same. Uh, no, Sir Botchalot. So the menu that we were just in is part of the vanilla Psycar, oh, vanilla expanded Psycasters mod. Um, you know, a lot of the content that we are playing is part of the biotech DLC, but we are playing with several mods. And if you do exclamation mark mods, that'll take you to a Steam collection that I've put together. So people, if they are wanting to have a look or uh, maybe play with the mods themselves. They can just go straight to that Steam collection and download the mods and start playing straight away. Hey Lily, good to see you. Welcome in. Smith, welcome. If you have any questions about the mods, please feel free to ask. Uh, I think I'm going to set up a proper little area for our mortar pad. I think that's going to be my next, my next big job. Where do I want to have my mortars? If we look at the map, I think where they are now probably is the best place to have them because this is fairly central. Our base is slightly skewed towards the, the south end of things. So I think if we get this made up properly... Uh, so for the moment, we'll uninstall this. Get this stuff out of the way. There we go. And we can use some of the granite that we've saved up. Oh, is this going to be enough room?
just, just gonna be enough room. So I think, okay, all right. I think I have a bit of an idea of how I wanna lay this out now. Uh, so what we can do is maybe do something like that. We can have the mortars, the mortar shells actually in the center part here. So the reason that we're going to put them into their own separate compartments like this chat is because we want to reduce the chances of a, uh, a chain explosion. If for some reason one of the mortars gets hit uh, or something bad happens, we want to make sure that not everything goes up in flames, you know. And this should, this setup should work with that. And we can install that. Yeah, that shelf will set up in there. Perfect. And we've got a trade ship coming by. Let's have a word with them. Let's see what they've got. Uh, they've got some Nutramine. That reminds me, I need to set up my drug lab before too much longer. That is a pretty high priority as well. Uh, some tattered clothing we can get rid of. Boom, boom, boom. Nothing too exceptional at the moment. We've got six reinforced barrels, which is nice. That means we can build up a few more of those... few more of those mortars that we need to fill out our new compound. I don't think we necessarily need anything else for the time being. I think we're actually pretty good. That, given the fact that we've only got one boomalope, 700 chem fuel, actually pretty impressive. Do I mean like what happened in the clip where all the chem fuel went up one by one? Yes. I d what the hell? What the hell? Quackamongus and Nevsol just had a social fight and Nevsol has been beaten to death. The last events in Nevsol's life. Quackamongus bashed Nevsol in the torso. Nevsol hit Quackamongus with a beat from her right fist, injuring her right leg and her right femur. Quackamongus utilized her left fist adeptly, hitting Nevsol in the, with a beat from her left fist, wounding her torso and her ribcage. Quackamongus beat Nevsol in the torso, leaving an enormous bruise. A bruise to the torso caused Nevsol to perish. Oh my god, dude. That is... That is rough. That is properly rough. <sighs> Quack Among Us, I cannot believe you've done this. Turns out that fist fighting with a... <laughs> fist fighting with a, with a vampire is a bad time. Uh... The, yeah... Yeah, smoking kidney. The problem is here that, yeah, Nevsol was part of the opposing religion in our colony. Hey, Orange Sims, good to see you. Welcome back. The number of cannibals in your colony fell to one. Oh, well, the number of cannibals in your colony fell to one. The cannibal clairvoyant role is no longer active. <laughs> oh, God damn it, dude. Uh. Uh. <laughs> Hey, Blue Mary, gonna get you to come over here and bring, uh, bring Nevsol back from the dead, please. Can't have an ideological rift if the others are dead, true. 
Yeah, but we're, go we're gonna be good. We're gonna bring Nevsol back. That's kind of BS. That is that is definitely a, a BS way to go out. I'm not a fan of that. Hey, Abby. Welcome back, Sass. Your Coles has no Vegemite chook. You got a regular chook anyway? Hell yeah. And you can always add your own Vegemite. True, true. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to go suss out whether there's a Vegemite chook at my local, you know. You certainly did, Sass. You certainly did. <sighs> my god. Can't believe this has happened, chat. Cannot believe this. So frustrating, man. That is so frustrating. Did Nev get a new leg? Uh, maybe. Right, they got a wooden foot still. Wooden foot still. So they have two days of resurrection sickness because we brought them back from the dead almost instantaneously. Hopefully there's not too much chance that uh, we'll have resurrection sickness, but we'll, we'll see. Or resurrection psychosis, I should say. Six fire foam shells. That's not bad. Some beer, some pen penoxicillin, some wake up components, uranium. Some tox shells, some uranium, and some package of You know what? This is actually isn't bad. Uh, Blue Mary, can you get treated for your injuries? And we're going to go out and we're going to go hunt down those animals. Not just for lunch, but for for some good old-fashioned... Good old-fashioned loots. Only in RimWorld can you bruise somebody in the torso and it explodes. <laughs> It's kind of grim, isn't it? It's a very upsetting experience. Okay, there we go. Alright, Blue Mary, go grab your gun. Off we pop. Where are these alpacas? Down here. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't even need to kill him. I can do this the humane way. Oh, do I? Oh, I don't have enough psi cast, uh, psi focus for it. I do need to kill them. I was. Wait, do we have a shield belt on? Oh, we do have a shield belt. That's that's why we can't shoot anything. Okay. Just have to do it the old-fashioned way, with bullets. The other ones will run, but we'll chase them down. Hey, Crow Witch, good to see you. Welcome back. I recommend sleep. It's a good time. Whoa! Oh my god! The Link's coming out of nowhere! Holy moly, dude. God damn. Alright. Uh, well, that's your kill. That's your kill, Lynx. You can have it. Fair play. Oh no, Platty. Yeah, EMI Dynamos are the worst. I hate them. They are the worst. Alright, go on, Blue, Blue Mary. Give it what's for. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. There we go. Made a bit of a meal out of that one, but we got there in the end. All right, let's go get the final one now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Blue Mary. Just out of nowhere. Oh, don't you go off the map. No, 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 no. I think you had the best stuff, right? Yeah, you had the, the drugs. You got all the fun stuff. The beer, the drugs, and the, uh, the components. There we go. That one was a bit easier. Perfect. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. 
haul those components back. Perfect. Hey, Rage, good to see you. Thank you for the work lurk. You cannot deal with life today. Wish you could go back to your blankets. I'm sorry to hear that you're having a tough day. That's uh, not great, but uh, thank you for being here. And I hope even with a little bit of a lurk, perhaps that can make your day just a, a fraction of fraction of a percent better. And uh, yeah, yeah, there's always tomorrow, right? Uh, compacted steel, meteorite crashing down. Very nice. Very nice. Very good. Very nice. Uh, I should actually do this ancient danger. It's been sitting there for ages. We're probably overdue. It has to be said. 20% of nothing is less. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. I guess that makes sense. Hey, Portagus Daniel. Eat the ancient danger. We should be able to do some uh, some pretty solid work against it, I reckon. What's a le legionary, Sarge? Oh, the le as in the mech. You'll have to let me know how it goes. Blue Mary has gained a Psy level. Perfect. Uh, that means now we can get the Guardian Skip Barrier, which generates a spherical skip gate around the caster that sends all incoming ground level projectiles into some distant place, lasting as long as they can manage the heat accumulation. People and items are not affected, and it takes immense concentration to hold. As such, the caster needs to be mindful with their steps. So that sounds really, really powerful. I'm looking forward to trying that out. And maybe we can start putting points into uh, upgrading our Psycaster stats so we have a greater neural heat pool. That should be pretty cool. Yeah, our own movable low shield. <laughs> no, this is an orphanage, Sir Botchalot. This is the only orphanage on the planet that we need to care about. Um, but yeah. Chat, we're about two hours in. I think now's a good time to take a quick break. So if you want to grab a drink, grab a snack. Now's a good time to do so. Have a bit of a stretch, med check, all of that good stuff. We'll be back in five minutes time. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're all having a great time. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. And no dancing while I'm gone.
I'm so sorry. It's a terminal diagnosis for big fucking awesome. Oh my god, is that THE Nick? In my chat? Literally just a chair. <laughs> How you doing? Sorry. I was just having a quick break. Um, but welcome in. How was the rest of your stream, dude? Give me two seconds, I'm just gonna finish eating this.
So I was just having a uh, Carmen's Seed and Plant Protein Bar. Raspberry and Pistachio. It's really good. But I regret instantly having this because it is stuck all in my teeth. It was a terrible choice. Um, chat, please go and check out uh, Nick. I know there's a few World of Warcraft fans in the chat. If you want to get some World of Warcraft content, Nick is a great place to hang out. Just a really funny guy in general as well. They are super chewy. <laughs> Don't do it. He's a bot. I mean, that is true. It is true. I was I was hanging out in Nick's stream earlier today. And I was like, while well, I was uh, doing some stuff, I was, I, was, I was doing some fishing in Worm, actually. I was like, yeah. I'm doing well, man. I'm just, uh, you know, playing this game that I played for, you know, 17 years. And you know what? You know what Nick did? He's like, I've never heard of Worm Online. And he pulled up Worm and watched the trailer for it. And uh, roasted this game that is very close to my heart. And he said, man, it looks like shit. And I was just like, wow. That's rough. That's rough. Imagine, imagine how cringe it is to punch down on a game that came out in 2003 for not having good graphics. Imagine. Ridiculous. <laughs> uh, sorry. For those of you who come over from Nick's stream, first of all, my condolences. I am so sorry that Nick has brought you here, first of all. Uh, but... My name is Bloody Drongo. I'm a variety streamer from Australia. We play all kinds of different things here, but right now I am down the rabbit hole playing uh, the new RimWorld D uh, Biotech DLC that came out not long ago. Uh, and we're currently running a school for vampires. It's a time. It's a whole thing. Uh, so feel free to hang out, chat, lurk, do your own thing. Uh, I appreciate you being over here, coming over with Nick. And uh, like I said, guys, go and check out Nick. Uh, got to got to hang out and chat with Nick several times over the course of uh, the weekend at PAX. Really, really nice guy. Um, tolerated me, which is a good a good thing. I didn't say anything about the graphics. You said it with your eyes, Nick. It wasn't about what you said. It's about how you said it. Rimworld is chaotically fun. Agree. I thought RimWorld was an erotic game. <laughs> I mean, I can see why. With a name like RimWorld. But it's not what you think. Although, anything that I play is super sexy anyway. So, you know. Yeah, welcome in. Uh, uh, Cabal, uh, Pixel... Zelara, or Zanlara, Lunith, welcome in. Thanks for coming over in the raid. I really appreciate it. If anybody else I missed you, please feel free to say hi. Uh, sorry you came in while I was AFK getting a, getting a little snack. But uh, yeah, I appreciate it. How do I make vampires? Uh, so there is a vampire start now, Rach. But there should also now be events that allow you to pick up the genetic markers to make vampires throughout as you play the game uh, there should be some events uh, and they will tell you that doing this might allow you to get the vampire genes i did i not just say hi cable did i not did i did i say it wrong okay all right sure I mean, I can see with an attitude like that why Nick might ignore you. <laughs> rough. That's rough. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm roasting. I'm, I'm, I'm being mean to everyone. I'm just lashing out. I'm just lashing out because Nick, Nick made fun of my game earlier. That's all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. I'm a rim expert. <laughs> it's true. I've got thousands of hours of this game. <laughs> <laughs> Poor 
Poor Nick. Bully. Bully. That is true. That is true. <laughs> that was the power play. It's like, I'm going to, I'm going to make fun of your game and then I'm going to log into my Neopets account and play games for the next 40 minutes. <laughs> which is, which is admirable. That is a power play for sure. Oh, that sucks, Mel. You know, my dirty little secret is that I don't think I ever had a Neopets account. But I definitely did date a girl who played unironically paid and played Neopets well into her, like, I think she was close to 20 when I stopped associating with her. So who knows? She might still be going. I don't, I'm not sure. Get one now. I... Uh, I don't have enough time to take up Neopets as well as everything else that's going on my in my life. Please. <laughs> I'm not going to play Neopets. You can't make me. You still actively play Neopets? Your account is 20 years old. That's badass, man. Like, look, I could make fun of Neopets as well, but like I said, I've been unironically playing Worm Online, which is an MMORPG sandbox game, by the way, if you didn't know about it. I've been unironically playing that for the past 17 years, so I'm, I'm not like I'm any better. 2K sub goal Neopet stream. Yeah, I mean, if somebody wants to pay me to play Neopets, sure. <laughs> sure. There's dragons. I mean, that is tempting. Neopets is still a thing, Crowitch. Yeah. Yeah, I know that for a fact because I watched Nick play Neopets earlier today. Mere hours ago. Anyway, back in reality, a bodyguard, a bodyguard named Mousy is crashing into transport pod nearby. Uh, Mousy is suffering from paralytic abasia and will be unable to walk. Okay. Do you have good traits? You're thin-skinned. You look an awful lot like dinner to me, my friend. I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries, dude. Good luck with the packing and, uh, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you too, buddy. Uh, thank you so much for bringing your peeps over. Thanks for the, the top quality bants and I'll, uh, I'll catch you soon. Take care, Nick. I think the, man, I did have a Digimon when I was a kid. Like, you know, those little, uh, those little, the little box Digimons, they're like kind of like a little TV. And I think they had like three buttons down the right hand side and, uh, they were pretty cool. I had one of those. I never had one of those ones with a step counter in it. The only the rich kids had those where they had the, the, the step counter in it and you could, used to be able to shake it and then you'd get to encounter new Digimon and stuff. That's what the that's what I always wanted when I was a kid, when I was growing up. But I never did. It's kind of sad. I, di I don't think I ever had a Tamagotchi, no. I had a Digimon. had them Tamagotchi and a Pox. What's a Pox? You still have your Tamagotchi? No way. That's amazing. Do you still like look after it and stuff? Oh no, my Nintendog! <laughs> Dude, I... Unironically, me and my best mate have spent hundreds of hours playing Nintendogs. Holy shit. What a game, dude. Oh. Oh, I love Nintendogs, man. That was that was a great game. I don't think I've played a more wholesome game since. 
because I think, I, I mean, I was probably like the most wholesome I've ever been during that period of my life because I think all I was playing was probably like Pokemon, Nintendogs, and Animal Crossing on the DS. I actually, not even, I don't even think I was playing Pokemon. I think I was literally just playing Animal Crossing and Nintendogs. And maybe some Mario Kart. That's super wholesome. Uh, Malto Kibri's having a tantrum. Okay, sure. Whatever. No big deal. Hasn't had batteries in it. I guess they can't ever really die if they don't have batteries, right? Hey, underdog. Good to see you. Is it, sorry, I just want to make sense, uh, make sure I'm either saying your name correctly or purposefully mis mispronouncing it for the sake of humor. Is it Kai? If it's not, please feel free to correct me. I, I do my best, but I am incompetent at pronouncing things. Uh, your school got so angry about it, except my math teacher who used to let you sort out your pups first for the five minutes of class. <laughs> Amazing. That is so good. Wow, wow, wow. I'm amazed that you were able to, like, we weren't allowed to have stuff like that at school. There was no way I would have ever taken my DS to school. It is Kai. Okay, cool. Stop saying my name. How rude. Played pinball during class. See, I, I, I went to school at that weird time where they were like transitioning from like having full textbooks and stuff to like trying out having things like uh, PDAs, which were like, I guess the prelude to like iPads. You had like the styluses and stuff. Uh, I never got them because it was, I think they started doing it for the, like the years under us, but I was like too old or too high in the system to get it. So I think it was the, only the kids under us that got the, the PDAs. I don't even know what PDA stands for. Is it like personal device assistant? I don't, I don't know. Uh... Blackberry. I, I had a Blackberry, yeah. I think my first phone was a Blackberry. I didn't get a Nokia. I was like a hipster. I had a Blackberry. I bet I could dig it out. I, I don't think I ever... I don't think I ever th th threw it away. Personal digital assistant. Ah, oh, there we go. That makes sense. Uh, we've researched moisture pumps. Very good. Uh, let's research biosculpting next. The 3310, yeah. I was I was never cool enough to have a 3310. All of my all of my friends had like all, had 3310s and stuff. I don't think I got a mobile phone until I was like 16, and I started working, and I was able to buy one myself because my, there's no way my parents were gonna buy me one. Hey, garlic mushrooms, how you doing? Welcome in. A yellow cover on your Nokia. That's pretty badass. Back in my day, PDA meant public display of affection. I'm pretty sure it still does. I think that's a very brief and brief part of history because PDAs aren't a thing anymore. But PDA very much is. So I think it's come back around, Cynic. So, uh, you know, congratulations, I guess. 7210. <laughs> Kai, please. Uh, I can I can I can only explain one of those questions. Uh, so Rimworld is a colony management game where basically you get put down onto a alien world and you have to survive against the elements. And uh, you know, you have to feed your colonists, uh, create clothing for them, manage their happiness. Yeah. 
survive from attacks from alien androids and uh, bugs and other humanoid factions. It's a whole thing. But yeah, that's a very brief overview of what RimWorld is and what it's about. We're trying to survive. You had a Nokia 11 because we moved further away from... I'm, I'm actually curious. I think I've got some of my old phones. Give me a second. Everybody has one of these boxes, right? Where you've got lots of old electronics and cables Boiling and stuff. Him, stick him in a shoe. That one day you might need. So you don't want to throw it out. <laughs> Thanks for the follow. It's a wholesome stream. You feel like you could corrupt it nicely. I mean, chat tries. Chat does really try their hardest. Uh, Boil them, there's a whole bunch of stuff stick here. In a shoe. Hang on. <laughs> is this hoarding? I mean, this is the only box I've... Jesus. This is the only box I've got, but... I guess it is kind of hoarding, because... It... Occasionally, I'll get cables and stuff out of here that I need. I've got old HDMI cables, old headsets... This is the headset that I used when I first started streaming. It has like Boiling, sticky mashing, tape to hold it together. Here we go. There's, there's one of my old phones. I've got an LG Nexus with a cracked screen. <laughs> okay, it's not a BlackBerry, but this is a Nokia 60, uh, E63. Man, wow, what a, what a cool guy. What a cool guy I was. I had a full keyboard. Take that, nerds. A full keyboard. I wasn't, like, texting, you know, with the beep, 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 beep. No, I had a full-ass keyboard. Take that. <laughs> That's funny, man. There is a lot of shit in here. Holy moly. This thing is packed. Uh, you had one of those as well, Rachy? Amazing. Hey, Mr. Elephant Head. Everyone who does not have such a box is a total maniac. That's what I think. Recycle them as you don't need them. I mean, that's true. But they can't go into landfill if I'm not throwing them away, right? Exactly a fence stick, yeah. Those are some small keys. Yeah, it was kind of a nightmare to try and type out on this thing. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you are a Sarge. Yeah, as soon as you start saying 1v1 me, you're turning into Meg. Confirmed. My key my keyboard is notorious for double presses. It's really annoying, actually. Hey, Robot Mystic. Good to see you. The problem is, is that you don't know if you need them or not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like the hoarder's mentality. It's like, oh, yeah, well, but what if I need it? I haven't needed either of these for the past tw 20 years, pretty much. I don't know, 15, 20 years. I'm not going to need them anytime soon. They have no value to me. But I've got my Wii in there, my original Wii. Uh, things like that. I probably should throw them out. I probably should recycle them. What if smartphones are banned?
you know what? I think if smartphones are banned, whatever else is causing that to have ho a whole thing to have occurred is probably going to be my biggest issue. I feel like that was such a lowball legacy. I almost feel bad that you went for that. <laughs> Tomorrow could be the day. Oh dear. No, my Wii. My Nintendo Wii. I roll. It's not that kind of stream. <laughs> All right. Give me. right. I'm going to put this back in the cupboard. You know, you know what? You know what would be kind of cringe, but also somewhat interesting, would be if I charged up that old phone and looked at my old messages. I hate reading back like logs of myself when I was younger, like, because I've been playing Worm for so long. Like I've got logs that go back 15 years and reading logs from like 14 year old Drongo God, it hurts my head. Destination cringe. <laughs> Kai. <laughs> you can save the sub. It ain't that kind of stream. <laughs> Yet. Oh dear, Quackamongus. Poor Wee. Hey, Whitey, good to see you. Big same for you, robot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your Gmail account goes back to when I was still a teen. Okay. Okay, so sorry. That reminds me of something that I think is just the most bizarre thing that I know about Nick, who just raided us. Just for those of you who <laughs> may have just come in. Uh, just so this makes sense and why it's a tangent. Uh, but, so the thing that I learned about Nick a couple of weeks ago is that Nick has only ever had one email account in their life. Which is... I... What? What? Who, who here has only ever had one email account? Like, what? <laughs> that's... That's... That's weird, right? That's weird, isn't it, chat? Like... I have at least, f I have three active email accounts that I use and I've made at least a dozen over the course of my life. You have the same account for everything? What do you mean? You have only ever had one email account. You're 39 years old, how? No way. Yeah, yeah, I think it's perfectly normal to still have your first email account. I still have my first, like, my first personal email account. So the first email account that I ever used was my school email. So when I was like 14, 15, they gave us like school emails to use on the school computers to sign in and stuff. Uh, when you were doing like uh, software design and that kind of thing. So that was... <laughs> discovered email a few years ago <laughs> no he's been using it forever apparently but like so my first email that i obviously don't use anymore is my school email uh but i also uh you know i i've got an old personal email that i still use for a lot of stuff mainly because uh, it, it was the one that I signed up to a lot of my old game accounts. Like some of my worm accounts are signed up to that email address. So I still use it. And I still use that as kind of like my throwaway. If I'm going to sign up for something that's personal, then I'll have it in there. Uh, I've also got like my professional personal email account, which is like my first and last name. And then that goes to, uh, you know, that was the one that I use for job applications and I use for, you know, my rental emails and stuff like that. And then I've got my work email, obviously now. 
but I've also had like several other emails that I've just created to make accounts and, you know, do random stuff that I'm just like, oh, I don't really want to use my actual email account to sign up for this thing. So I'll just, you know, use a throwaway or whatever. So the idea of having like one email account ever is just mind boggling to me. If you count school, uni emails, I'd have a lot more then. Yeah. And I mean, like, I had, like, a work, work, multiple work emails and stuff. Like, it's a whole thing. Oh, yeah, I've also got a, a, a separate one for my phone. So I guess technically I've got four, four separate emails. True. Drongo is still a baby. Yeah, we had school, school email. My first email account is still my my email account. Well, I think I think a lot the the problem is is that my first like my first personal email account was my gaming well in part was my gaming avatar's name at the time. So it's not something that I would use seriously going forwards, which is why I then made my you know more serious personal email account so I could use that on like job applications and stuff but <laughs> there was I can actually well I, I could probably get away with telling this story so I so I used to work at a bank right before I became a, a full-time streamer and a, a leech on society I, I worked at a bank and as part of that you know we used to have to verify people's identity and you'd have security questions and you'd get them to tell you you know what you know what their date of birth is you know what their home address is and you know what their email address is and you know security codes and all that sort of stuff and it would always make me laugh when people would use like the email addresses <laughs> that they obviously made when they were quite young and <laughs> It's all it's always a su kind of surreal thing when you're like as at like talking to somebody over the phone or even worse sitting there face to face with somebody and being like okay uh can you just verify your email address for me please and they're just like they get that look in their eyes and you can see it on your screen they can't see your screen and you know what they're about to come out with and you can see the shift in their face when they like lean in and they're a little bit embarrassed about it and they're just like oh you know uh it's it's uh Jesse's a hottie xxx69 at hotmail.com or something like that <laughs> it used to make me laugh so much watching them squirm when people used to have those those old email addresses they'd use that they were just a little bit ashamed of it was great it was great <sighs> hey on a cog pikachu babe 7075 oh my god <sighs> hey Ray of Flippin' Sunshine, good to see you, welcome in. You know exactly what I mean, yeah. It's a very specific look that they get on their face. You still got your Hotmail? Yeah, I've still got a Hotmail address, yeah. There's, 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 a, there's several that in my mind, <laughs> some really, really funny ones I've had. Some like fairly explicit ones from like middle-aged women that always they they're the ones that stick out in my mind and i obviously i can't tell you what they are because they're legitimate emails and i'd be doxing them but just know that there's some really funny ones out there chat <laughs> oh god yeah exactly kai man msn was a whole time right that was a whole last time Yeah, see, I, I didn't have that, Sarge, so, yeah. That was, apparently, that's why Nick, Nick, uh, I think Nick said that his dad helped him make his first email, which is why he's kept it for so long, because it's apparently just, like, his name or whatever. So, yeah. Angry Draken, no worries. Take care. Have a good night. Thanks for hanging out with us and chatting along. Go get some sleep. Jesse McCartney. Oh my god. Amazing rage. <laughs> That's so funny. 
Oh my god, Kai, bestie crush. <laughs> oh my god, you know, you know what? No, no, no. And you'd like update your status to like song lyrics to reflect how angsty you were on that particular day. Oh my god, wow. MSN was a whole time. Yeah. Congratulations! Uh, Stajan, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Two months? Has it really been two months? Hey, Dom. Love dads. Good to see you. <laughs> Chocolate milk is overrated at gmail.com. You can't register at Crow Witch. I've already registered that one. <laughs> of course. Oh, man. MySpace, yeah. MySpace and Bebo were, the, were all the rage when I was uh, a teen. AOL. I think AOL was a bit before my time. I'm sorry. ICQ. No, I don't. Stickstar. True. True, Kai. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. AOL wasn't really in Oz. Okay, so maybe it's more of an American thing. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Because I know Meg's older than me, so I think Meg would have been in the primary demo demographic for it if it was a thing in Australia. <laughs> Calm down, Dan. Tell us how you really feel. It didn't have Australia online? True. <laughs> Mmm, it did, Tim. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely some, you know, awkward, awkward teenage drama that came around of, you know, oh my God, did you see that Katie removed uh, Jesse from her uh, top Facebook, uh, MySpace friends? Oh my God. What a bitch. <laughs> Facebook is super boring. I love that there's like a whole generation of like website developers that came about because of MySpace and like, you know, putting their own custom backgrounds into their, their, their MySpace page and getting music to players who explored through it and stuff like that. You know, like there's a whole, there's a whole generation of people that grew up with that. They were just like, man, this is now my life and my entire identity. Uh, Dire Dwarf, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in. How was Cosmeteer? Uh, guys, go and check out Die Dwarf, magnificent individual here on Twitch. Uh, has been known to play quite a bit of RimWorld, uh, although they play quite a lot of other things too. And uh, yeah, a good place to go chill out. It's good to see you, uh, Die. I hope you're well. Uh, and if you're coming over from Die Dwarf stream for the first time, I'm Bloody Drongo. I'm very sorry that Dyer has brought you here. You might be sat there right now going, why? Why me? And I don't have a good answer for you, but... You can expect to see variety of games here. We're playing RimWorld at the moment, and we're having a good time. So feel free to hang out, lurk, chat along. We're currently talking about... Uh, the yesteryears. We're doing the old person thing of reminiscing about days gone by. Talking about MSN and AOL and MySpace and Bebo and all those other things. It's a, it's a good old, a good old time. I got so rich from knowing how to use Photoshop back in those days. Man, I still don't know how to use Photoshop. <laughs> true, true, Kai, true. I should make... Uh, make it so the images of the horsemen in the right alert are the avatars of the raiders. It's a cool idea. Quack, I don't think I can do that. And it probably also has some potential TOS risks because people can put a lot of different things in their profile pictures, if you know what I mean. I just feel old all the time these days. It's a tragedy. But it is my birthday later this month and I'm sure that'll help things. I totally won't at all have another existential crisis. No sorry. Uh, man, look how pretty. Look how pr Wait, did I not make this out of granite? I thought I made that shelf out of granite. What the heck? 
I'm a babe, baby. Getting to that midlife crisis age. Yeah. Yeah. Forty two in January. Damn. What's an open diary? I don't even know what that is. Oh no, Tim. <laughs> oh no. That's that's tragic. That is tragic. Poor poor little piggly. Dear oh dear. Uh, and then down here on this stockpile zone, we're going to put, uh, barrel, barrel, reinforced barrels. There we go. Perfect. If I don't tell anyone my birthday, I don't age, right? I think that's how it works. How old am I going to be? I'm going to be 31 in November. So I'm I'm still I'm still I'm still a wee babby in the grand scheme of things. Auntie Kai's gone into lurk. No worries. Thank you. Thank you for coming over in the raid. I appreciate it. Thanks for the bants and we'll uh hopefully see you around in the future. Otherwise, I will see you over in Nick's stream uh at no at some point, I'm sure. Um yeah. Take care. You bib. Little bib. Hey, Mr. Junks. Just turned 53. Congratulations. It's a good age. It is a good age. Yeah, legitimately, you know, as, as much as I joke about being old, like, it is a really good age, and I'm probably the happiest I've ever been in my life right now, which is, which is really nice. Like, I mean, I've talked a lot about, you know, in the past, um... You know, had had a lot of troubles with uh, mental health and stuff like that growing up, and quite legitimately, I I never thought like I never made any plans to do anything, and I never tried at anything because I never thought that I would live to C twenty five. Like, I mean that you know, not to be a downer, but just being realistic, um, that was very much my outlook of life. You know, when I was younger. Uh, and I did a lot of cool stuff, but I also did a lot of really silly and reckless stuff, uh, because of that. And, you know, it, it, once I got to 25, I kind of had this weird moment of being like, oh shit. I am, I am still here. What am I going to do now? And then that was kind of the point where I was like, okay, I'm going to get my shit together and get a real job and do adult things and go from there i guess so yeah it's a whole thing it's a whole thing and i know not everybody's gonna understand that but i'm sure there's a few people out there that understand that mentality or maybe you're still in the the midst of that thing there where you're just like you know i don't care about whatever's going on in my life right now because you know i i don't see how anything's going to change or i don't see how you know uh, you know i don't see a point of 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 caring about stuff um but maybe one day that'll change and uh you'll be glad you'll be glad that you saw you were around to see it change uh i guess is the point that i'm making because uh i'm glad i'm glad that i'm here and like i said i'm i'm gonna be turning 31 at the end of this year and i'm the happiest <laughs> i'm the happiest i've ever been in my life it's really good You're legit the same way. 38 and still kicking? Hell yeah. Proud of you, Cynic. That's awesome. Used to be quite a happy kid with my paper cups and piece of string. Now I get overset, <laughs> upset over five minutes of internet powered outage. Oh, Scape up, bless. Bless. The old Ness, man. Ness is a, is a whole thing. All that real talk. Yeah, sorry to be a bit of a downer chat. I, that might be a bit much, but, uh, you know, just being just being real with you. That's all. Uh, this is a little bit more of a larger met cluster, and it is an EMI dynamo. That is disgusting. Uh, 
interesting position though of this EMI dynamo means that I think we can come over here and be shot by nothing but I think this mini slugger turret. So let's get Quack Among Us out here. We might try and do a little bit of a little bit of mech sniping here. Hell yeah, Raptor. I'm proud of you too, buddy. Yeah. And what I say, like, I'm the happiest, uh, the happiest that I've ever been now, doesn't mean that it's all, I'm always happy by any stretch of the imagination. You know, I still, still have hard days. You know, uh, mental health is something that, you know, changes over time. It, it ebbs and flows. Uh, but, uh, I can tell you what, it's a, damn sight better than it was then uh, now than it was then uh, that's for sure all right let's do guided shot and let's take out this turret on average i'm happier exactly exactly on average i'm a happier person Okay, is this Lancer? It's gonna be in range very soon. So we'll think we'll I think we'll pop some speed boost here and we'll fight a little bit of a a wandering retreat. The good thing is with the extra pool of neural heat, we can cast a lot of psi powers. Like we've got a huge amount of psi powers at our disposal to just keep chipping away at these uh, mechs. Although that pikeman's now in range, which is not ideal. Oh, come on. Of course, the first and only shot it gets at me hits me. Of course it does. Ow. That is painful. Wait, who are you shooting at? Oh, are you shooting at Legacy? Okay, you can shoot at Legacy. Legacy's got a shield belt. That's That suits me just fine. Uh, these two can actually go and melee that pikeman. Can't believe that first shot while I was still in cover as well took out... Uh, get us right in the torso. Alright, nice. Good job. Alright, let's go get treated. We've done our job there, at least for the time being. Oh god, hang on, no, I, you know what? I need to take out that EMI Dynamo, don't I? Uh, and probably the Mech Assembler too. Okay, I'm going to gather together a couple more people. We're going to want to group up for this. You're going to want to get a group together for this fight. Uh, Nevsol, where is your... You got a wep uh, melee weapon, right? Yeah. Where is your sword? There it is. Uh, Squire, let's get you. Legacy, let's get you. All right. They are a challenge. That is true, Blue Mary. <laughs> a true skink. It kind of does, doesn't it? Uh, actually, Sky Soup, you know what? I'm going to get you to grab... Oh, you do have EMP grenades. No, I think... No, we, we'd better... We'd better get a smoke... Uh, a smoke launcher, hadn't we? We'll get a smoke launcher. That'd be the smart idea here. Poor old Deli Marky has lost a thumb to that pikeman, which is annoying. Wait, did I not? I thought I destroyed that mini slugger turret. Apparently not. My bad. 4% health. Rough. Okay, everybody. Welcome in. 
Good to have you. All right. Okay, Squire. Let's get you to pop down some smoke there for us. All right, let's move in. Go, go, go. Are we still out of range? Are we just out of range? Okay, let's put some more smoke down range. Nice. All right. Now we should be able to take out that mini slugger turret without too much of a problem. There we go. Nice work. Good, good, good. All right. Now let's put down some smoke here at the corner. And we need to watch out for these auto charge turrets. They're the they're the big menace. Go on, melee. Go punch it. Oh, wait. Oh, of course, because they can... Uh, we go here. Yeah, now they can't shoot us. Perfect. Didn't realize... I, I should have realized, but that gap there exists, which means it's a problem for us. Yeah, absolutely true. Absolutely true, underdog, yeah. Yeah, I'm under no illusions that things will stay the same forever. Um, but I'm I'm excited for things to you know, see, see what happens, you know. Okay. Why don't you fly smoke at the turrets that seems like a fool's errand okay that's gonna be one turret down beautiful all right next up another turret down slowly chip away at these. I think we can actually probably take out this mech assembler now to stop it producing another pikeman. There we go. Good stuff. I think we should be able to take our melee pawns back now and just leave this down to our ranged ones. There we go. Inferno, Inferno turret down. Got to worry about this mini slugger and this mini slugger and the auto charge turret. And that should be the. That should be all that wrote for those ones there. Let's put some smoke down on the corner here. And take out that last one there. On soupy. Bap. There we go. All right, let's move up. Nice. All right, Met Cluster defeated. EMI Dynamo dealt with. You love to see it, chat. You love to see it. Good work, everybody. Oh, I'm happy with how that went. That went about as well as we could hope for, besides Quackamongus getting absolutely railed in the ribcage. That's not a... That's certainly not exactly ideal. Uh, but I am happy about it. Uh, let's go ahead and get some mortars made, shall we? So we got one, two, three, four. There we go. Let's get them going. Hey, Red Talon. Good to see you. I am Red Talon. I am a large, semi-muscular man. I can take it. <laughs> How you doing today, Red Talon? It's good to see you. 
hope you're well. Reza's gotten a shooting frenzy. Reza's probably not too far away from becoming an adult chat. Less than a year now. Not bad. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. And Reza's gained another Psy casting level. Uh, and that's going to max out the Necro path for us. So we're going to get Ghost Walk, which psychically convinces the atoms of the caster that they are able to pass between the atoms of structures. The duration of the Deceit scales with the caster's psychic sensitivity. So we can walk through walls now with Reza. That's awesome. Hey, Tay, I'm, I'm very well. How are you? It's good to see you. Oh, well, I guess that's good, right? Have a have a day a day off work or a, a day of, of less work, question mark. Can I show us how he walks through walls? I think it's going to be pretty underwhelming. But yeah, we haven't actually used that power yet, so why not? Um, what is it? Uh, is it? Oh, here we go. Ghost walk. Boom. I can just, just walk straight through it, you know? Easy. Not a big deal. Oh god, Dalka! <gasps> no! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Jesus. Poor, poor baby Dalka went toe-to-toe -to -toe with a boom rat. Ah, oh dear. Busy walking through walls as Dalka fights an explosive rat. Look, in hindsight, that maybe wasn't the wisest move, okay? I'm glad you're in a good mood, Tay. I'm glad you're in a good mood. How am I keeping track of this many students I had? We need a counter on screen. Well, I mean, we do have exclamation mark graduates, which tells us how many people we've uh, had graduate so far. Uh, but yeah, we we'll probably get uh, we can probably get a counter on screen, I guess. <laughs> that seems accurate, Master Pilot Wash. I would say, yeah. Poor Dalka. Poor baby Dalka. So sad, man. So sad. Maybe once we hit double digits, if it ever happens. Wow, okay. Okay. I see what you mean. I see, I see, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Hey, Power Helix. If you have any questions about our challenge run, please feel free to ask, but otherwise enjoy enjoy watching the stream. God, boom rat. It's going to start our whole, whole last forest fire right now. Not a fan of that. <sighs> oh, we botched the construction and we used up one of our reinforced barrels unnecessarily. That kind of sucks. Uh, we'll set these to only use high explosive rounds as a default for the time being. Yeah, high explosive should be fine. Wait, did we botch again? No. No, we didn't. No, it's fine. I was worried there for a brief moment. And it looks like we finally stabilized our food situation after... All of the dramas that we've had over the last little while. Uh, 
finally not just constantly desperately desperately wanting to get more and look at this deli monkey has leveled up their harmonist abilities so we can now unlock transmutation utilizes the alchemical foundation of equivalent exchange converts a targeted item or stack of items into an object of equal or lesser value otherwise extremely unpredictable and uncontrollable <laughs> so it's basically in-game gamba uh so why don't we test this out on a stone chunk no must be worth at least one dollar per item okay what about if we do it to what what's something somewhat valuable let's do it to a shield belt no nope, no maybe i have to be standing near it i guess Come over here. Let's try it. Hey, Dodo. Hey, Don. I'm sorry to hear it's a little bit underwhelming for you. Oh, here we go. Now it's working. All right. What do we get? We get an SMG. It's hard to imagine how that power is useful besides the humor aspect of it. That's, uh, hmm. Yeah, it, it's a little underwhelming. A little underwhelming. All right, let's uh, connect this to the power grid. And we'll put in some lights here as well, just so that if people are hanging out over here at night time, they won't complain about it being too dark or whatever. Actually, I guess I could put the lights here, couldn't I? That would probably make a little bit more sense. Ugh. There we go. What about using it on tainted clothing or bio-coated weapons? I'm pretty sure both of them have a zero value, Master Pilot Wash. Oh, can you use it on toxic waste packs? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know what the value of toxic waste packs is. <laughs> Quackamongas. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. My condolences. They are worth zero. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, in that case, it wouldn't work. The fun, it was a fun idea. It was a fun idea. But sadly, it would not work. Because it needs to have a, a dollar value of at least one. Hmm. I'm sure may, maybe there is some other useful application for it. I don't know. I'm sure we'll be able to think of something eventually. I don't know. I'm happy with how these little mortar setups came out though. I think that looks pretty nice. Put the tox packs onto a shelf or a drop pod. I'm pretty sure the game should correctly resolve that once the that container doesn't exist, then the items will just get spilled out onto the ground. I'm pretty sure that's how it would look at it. Because certainly that's what happened if like a shelf gets destroyed in combat, which I think is going to be the same thing. Like it just stops existing, right? I don't know. I mean, we could test it, right? We could test it. I 
mean, the trick is going to be trying to select the actual shelf itself. Oh, actually, you can't do it on furniture. Okay. You can't do it on furniture. You can do it on items on shelves, but not target the shelves themselves. That, uh, that resolves that. I Okay, I guess then the assumption is going to be that you can't do it on installed items. Yeah, you can't do it on installed items, but I bet if you uninstalled a sculpture, you could do it to them. I don't think you can put them on a shelf. It's 50 steel in one component versus 25 toxic waste packs. What? Shelves don't take components. Shelves are just 20, 20 material. Or are you... Oh, are you talking... Uh, no, sorry. You're talking about drop pods, not shelves. My bad. Never mind. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I got there in the end. Hey, Antagonist, good to see you. What's the pea-colored pea room? If your pea is this color, Antagonist, like nuclear yellow, you probably need to hydrate more. Um, please, please take good care of yourself. <laughs> seek, seek medical uh, advice. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, but no, sorry, to answer your question, this is our uh, recreation slash dining room. <laughs> sorry, I realized I gave you the, the sassy response without actually telling you what on earth is going on. But no, that is that is correct. This is our, this is our dining room. Mine's blue. That's normal, Brie. That's normal. That's baseline. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, at least. <sighs> you raise a good point, Divis Moors. Uh, do we have anything worth 1200? I don't think so. What would they call it? Yellow cake uranium if you weren't supposed to eat it. <laughs> I don't have a good response to that. It's all the British hard water. It's true. It does do that to you. Mm. Does beetroot colour your pee? I didn't... Oh, you know, I've eaten a lot of beetroot in my life, but I, I don't think I've ever eaten enough for it to taint my pee. It does. Oh, there you go. Interesting. Uh, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. pretty scary at first i can imagine i would i would be terrified maybe i maybe i just don't pay enough attention beetroot colors everything yeah I, well i know that ray of flipping sunshine i mean if you really want to get into that like you can go visit my youtube channel i did a, a makeup tutorial a full 20 minute long makeup tutorial uh using nothing but kitchen condiments that's right mayonnaise beetroot ground coffee paprika i looked fabulous it's a good time go check it out <laughs> don't ew me how dare you i it's natural <laughs> divis morse just just call you sunshine all right you got it you got it i'm glad that we're now on uh those personable terms i appreciate that hobbit man hello there welcome in mayonnaise uh yeah i was talking about my makeup tutorial lottie i think you know about that don't you you're pretty cool so i'd assume you do know about it annie how you doing welcome in Welcome, welcome. Uranium is also natural, Drongo. <laughs> yeah, and? And? Did I stutter?
Thanks, I think, Red Talon. But, you know, I'm just doing... If I do it, I'm doing it for myself. I'm not doing it for anybody else. It was funny, Lottie, yeah. I recently got the, the pleasure of seeing Hell Hath Some Furies makeup tutorial, and it was really good. It was really good. Gives your skin a healthy glow. Good old uranium. Disclaimer, do not actually use uranium on your skin as part of your daily skincare regime. I scrolled in to look at this, but now I've forgotten what I was doing. I was completely distracted. I'm trying to do too many things here at once, chat. I've got too many balls being tossed up in the air. What was... Was there a... No, it's, I've lost it. I've lost it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Spudman, how you doing? Welcome in. Good to see you. Hope you're well today. Yeah, sure. Sure, Skink. Yeah, why not? Why not? Oh, uh, I know one thing that I do want to do, and that is make flak vests. Oh my goodness, do we want to make flak vests? Boy, howdy. So, Quack Among Us. Normal or better, 60% or better. We want to have at least 10. And we're going to whip those bad boys up. You're in the process of designing a coloring book with positive words for mental health. Very cool. That's awesome. I I don't know. I mean, I've talked about it on stream several times, but one of my pet projects for this year, one of my goals for 2020 was to get my coloring book published. And, uh, I don't think that's going to happen, unfortunately. It turns out getting a coloring book physically published is pretty challenging. But, I think eventually it'll happen. Oh no, my boomerang's going to die from this heart attack. Come on, Nevsol. You can do it. So, but the, the point I was making though, Lottie, was that it's a pretty challenging endeavor and I hope it goes well for you. There we go. We've got a treatment success. It's not 2020. Wait, did I say 2020? I did mean 2022. <laughs> I, did, I did mean 2022, but my bad. Whoops. Not even with self-publishing. So the problem with self-publishing a coloring book is that the quality with self-published is really, really lacking. And I want it to be a decent quality. Like, I think with coloring books especially, like the paper quality needs to be decent to be worth it, I guess. Because I mean, like... I'm sure anybody who's had a coloring in book before has had that time where you've bought a coloring in book that you're kind of looking forward to and you open it up and you realize the paper's just not good. Why does uh, Malto still have legs? Malto is one of our colonists, Abby. So they, they're going to be released once they've been re-educated back to our religion. We had a schism, so... It does still feel like 2020, exactly. It's true. So, the other idea... Because I because I haven't been able to get it officially published... Uh, as a colouring book, is... The other idea that I had was to just sell... The digital prints as a collection on, like... I don't know, printful or something like that. So people can download their these coloring in templates as a collection and use them on their own computer or print them out on their own paper and color them in that way. Which, 
I don't know. I, I like the idea of having a physical coloring in book, but that may be the direction I go in next year with it. I'm not sure. But yeah. Either way, it's a challenging endeavor, and I hope you I hope it goes well for you, Lottie. But the whole world of the whole world of publishing is and can be a pretty pretty complex one. Uh, one of my very good friends, uh, Renee Sky, runs a publishing company, and uh, she'll tell you she'll tell you just how challenging it can be. Uh, I think we might actually be within realm of another forced recruit here, or oh, forced convert for Malto. So let's give it a crack. Down to 9.7%. Okay, only a couple more days away. She mainly does ebooks. Interesting. That's awesome. What kind of uh, books does she write? Uh, Quackamongus is ready for death rest. Chat, actually, speaking of Renee, I would be remiss if I didn't give you the daily reminder that uh, this Friday is going to be a whole a whole thing because Renee and I are collaborating on something and I can tell you it has something to do with books. There's a hint for you. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, stay tuned for announcements this Friday. Uh, there'll be a new thing coming and it'll be an ongoing collaboration as well between myself and Renee. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. I think you guys will enjoy it too. Um, because I know there is people here from both mine and Ren's communities. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm excited for this. So, uh, if you're, if you're on Twitter, go and hype this post up. Go, 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 go give it some love. Go hype it up. And, uh, yeah. Who's that Pokemon? Who knows? They are, there are drinking buddies, Lottie. Yeah, there are drinking buddies. The tea will be spilled. It will. It will. Exactly. Some more tea and tails, perhaps. You could be onto something, Platty. You could be onto something. I'm excited, Lily. I'm very excited. It's brand friendly. Brand friendly, Lottie. Drinking buddies. More teen tales? <laughs> that's, a, that's a totally different thing. When does the sponsored stream start? The sponsored stream start starts in 27 minutes, Meg. When play new game? 27 minutes. Are you and Meg in voice chat? Is that why you're operating off of the same brain cell right now? Or is that just a coincidence? <laughs> just, just the dot 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 no maybe okay all right all right acknowledged acknowledged uh deli monkey has tried to convert malto kibri and we've turned them away from cannibalism and towards the way there we go all right perfect we can release them now back into general population uh, I mean, half each, Meg. Maybe, maybe three quarters each. One and a half, you know. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, look, you know. I've got to throw the shade out there. It's what I do. We both know that. All right. Surely Reza must be close to aging up now. Oh, we're just a couple of days from Reza becoming our next graduate chat. So close. So close. 
Travelers need aid. Ooh. A group of poor travelers, including a child. Uh, well, that sounds like lunch and maybe a new person to join the academy. An academian wimp and delicate. They're a genie. Designed to be engineers, genies have a natural aptitude with machines and are so uh, and are emotionally cold and calm. They are also fragile and vulnerable to pain. Focused on machines, they often come off as socially inept. Okay. Sounds like they're ready for an education. Oh, Molto, you can have your gun back as well, by the way. You can have a gun. Uh, what type of gun do we want you to have? Chain shotgun will probably be fine for the time being. <laughs> don't need to read your bio like that. Sorry, I didn't mean to out your HE. My bad. My bad. Uh, right, let's go ahead and do the paralysis pulse. Boom. There they go. Nevsol. Uh, are you... Okay, you're not... Okay, we'll arrest the child. And the rest of them will be dinner, dude. What kind of hats do they have? Steel slice caps. Fancy. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boys. Very nice. Thank you, Nev. There we go. Perfect. Man flesh. Hey, Nev. How you doing? Look at that. Butcher him up. Very good. Oh, thanks for thanks for sharing, uh, Annie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was good timing, Nev. It was good timing. A combat supplier. All right, let's have a word with them. See what they've got. I'm looking for some new fun guns to play with. I've got another Gorse Lance. I was pretty disappointed with the Gorse Lance. I don't think it was that good. Uh, I'm not going to sell any of my other guns. They've mainly just got like a Derringer, some axes. It's pretty underwhelming, honestly. I also just remembered I've got a Joy Wire that I've been holding on to now for a really long time. Also, that shield belt is done. We can sell that for 200 bucks. It's been used up. Get rid of some of those flash grenades too. Taser gun. Every single trader seems to have an anti-material rifle. They seem to be really popular. Yeah, whatever. We'll do it. Do I play with a mod that gives you bullet storms? Bullet storm. I don't know what that is. Oh, a Resurrector belt? Excuse me, what? Uh, his enemies have been harassing his settlements. It's a military staging area guarded by five imps that will launch raids on us every 25 days and there may be an unknown threat. The th site will remain until you destroy it. Honor, Eltex, and Marine Helmet. What is a Resurrector belt? A belt containing a dose of Resurrector Serum injects the serum immediately after death. <laughs> what? So you wear this belt and it'll immediately bring you back from the dead if you die. 
What? What? No way. Although, I have a feeling that these tech prints are going to be the more uh, tempting one. Nick, thank you so much for the raid. Welcome in. How was Ragnarok? How was Ragnarok? I did, I did, uh, I took a break earlier and I did see that you were actually playing. So obviously it did arrive in the end. Um, but guys, please go and check out our friend Energetic. Uh, they <laughs> are a great Aussie streamer and, uh, we're going through a little bit of a crisis earlier waiting for, uh, <laughs> Ragnarok to come and, uh, yeah, go check him out. I'll vouch for him. Uh, follow Maka, how you doing? Fennec, welcome in. Uh, Emma, Abyss, Nick, great to see you. It's so good. Hell yeah, I love to hear it. That's awesome. Welcome in. You see, you swear you've seen me recently? I don't know. My condolences if you have. I'm so sorry. Um, welcome in, free flag. Uh, thank you for the follow as well. Uh, if you're new here, hi, I'm Bloody Drongo. I'm a variety streamer from Australia. We play lots of different games here. Uh, at the moment, we're playing Rimworld. It just had a new DLC come out recently, and I have been 100% addicted to playing that, and uh, we're having a good time. We're trying to run a school for vampires right now. And uh, But you can also find me playing things like GeoGuessr. We're actually going to be swapping into a sponsored segment uh, in about 20 minutes' time. Uh, so feel free to stick around and you know hang out for that. Uh, you can do exclamation mark ad if you want to check out the game that we're going to be uh, playing a little bit later on. It's an MMO, MMO strategy game, which sounded interesting to me. So I'm interested to see, interested to see how it goes. But um, yeah, feel free to lurk or chat along with us. Appreciate you being here. You're having a breakdown because your delivery did not arrive until 7 p.m. It's... Because I live out in the country, Nick, it is wild to me that you get deliveries that late. That is that is bizarre to me. Like, I just cannot comprehend. Like, after... If it gets to, like, 4 o'clock, I know I'm not getting to something that day. I just know it's not going to happen. There you go. Sunshine's got it. Uh... Oh, really, Nevsol? Yeah, okay. I, I haven't seen it. No. Amazon is different. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Fair fair play. I'm, I'm glad you got it. I know, like, I like from the moment you went live today, I was, like, having a bit of a... I was hanging out, having a bit of a lurk, and just the, the slow descent into desperation just like oh man you know it, i haven't got a notification has arrived but maybe i'll just go and check the mailbox you know you know, just in case uh man i'm so glad it arrived though that's great news you've had amazon deliveries at 8 p.m wow wow like amazon doesn't operate out where i am so it, they get uh i think star star track star trek no star track rather star track that's the one that's not a TV show, uh, they get Star Trek to do their deliveries for them and they'll head back to the depot at 4 p.m. Uh, so if you don't get it by them, you ain't getting it. Star Trek deliveries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, listen, it's been a long day already, Nick. <laughs> JB used them a lot too. Yeah, yeah. They're one of the bigger career countries in, in New South Wales, at least. I think New Victoria and Queensland too. The driver's called Scotty, right? Actually, there... <laughs> yeah, there is. There is a driver called Scotty because I know because he used to deliver stuff when I used to work in the office. He used to deliver stuff to him. Oh, I, I know Scotty. I think we all know a, a courier named Scotty in Australia, right? Right? It's a thing. Hey, Angie, good to see you. You've had an Amazon delivery at 8 p.m. before as well. Wow, okay. They do, Red Talon, exactly. They set a red shirt to deliver the package. They're expendable, you know. Picardogram. Oh, my God. 
Star Trek is owned by Ozpost. Is it owned by Ozpost? I thought it was the other way around. I think they're independently owned, but Ozpost uh, subsidizes or contracts out to a lot of Ozpost. Hang on. Uh, is, is Star Trek owned by Ozpost? Am I wrong about this? It is owned by Ozpost. My bad. My bad. I don't know what I'm talking about. There you go. Immediately humbled. Why, why, why is it a different thing though? Why is it a different thing? <laughs> like why don't, why, why? I don't understand. You live 15 minutes from one of the depots. There you go. Wow. For me, where I am, it takes like two weeks to get anything delivered, even from like Sydney or Melbourne. They never changed the branding. Oh, did, did Ozpost buy them? And they just never changed the branding. Interesting. Seems weird. Okay. Star Trek was a bit better than Ozpost. I mean, Ozpost are crap. Ozpost are terrible. Like I know, um, did you, did you take part in Bitfest, Nick? Like last Bitfest? You, no, I do. No, I did see your post actually on Twitter because you got your shoes. But like, there's a bunch of Australian Twitch partners that where Ozpost has lost their packages. So people haven't got their, like their switches and their Boy, shoes and stuff like that. Stick him in a shoe. Man, I would be devastated. I'd be devastated if I was one of those people. It's so frustrating. Bloody Ozpost, man. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. It's super sus, right? Super sus. There's so many people affected by it that it's just, it's weird. Super weird. Ah, uh, gotcha, Angie. Yeah, makes sense. Shut your mouth. Australia Post are fantastic. What universe do you live in, Skink? I'm sorry. What? I, no, you, you're just trolling me, right? You're just trying to upset me. Ozpost are great here. What? Where? Where? Are we talking about Austria Post right now? Is that what you're thinking? <laughs> Is that what? We're not talking about Austria. We're talking about Australia. Just to clarify. Exactly, Nick. Yeah. Perth. I mean, Perth might, Western Australia might as well be its own bloody country. Your parcel guy is great. Fair. In Germany, every parcel service can suck. It depends on the delivery guy, not the service. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't even think, like, I'm sure there are people that are good at their job that work for Australia Post, but it feels like the whole organization as a whole is pretty flawed. And I know that there are a lot of areas where there isn't the, the people that actually deliver stuff on behalf of OzPost are independent contractors because OzPost doesn't actually want to pay them full employment benefits. And, uh... That definitely is not a employment strategy and a business model that leads to well-invested and well-trained and well-managed employees. It's pretty bad. Aramex. I, didn't, I don't even think I've heard of Aramex. Interesting. Oh, jeez, Angie. Yeah, wow. Huh. There you go. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. I can conclusively say that my impression of Ozpost is negative, but maybe, maybe other people have had a better experience. In which case, I'm glad. Oh, it used to be fast away couriers. Oh, fast way. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd never used them for anything, but yeah. Okay. 
Uh, do we want to go take on these imps? I think we do. Let's go on a little bit of a quest chat. Also, why is Quackamongus incapacitated? Oh yeah, they're death resting. That makes sense. Go for the belt? We don't need the belt though. The belt is irrelevant because we can just res people ourselves. We have the, we have the power. Whereas this stuff, now this, this we don't have. <laughs> wow, okay, Arch. Okay, Arch. Just call me out, why don't you? Ozpo- Okay, is- Okay, I think Ozpost is- Is either government run or government subsidized. Uh, it, is Ozpost private? Uh, Ozpost is wholly owned by the Australian government. Rep res represented by two shareholder ministers. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so it is- It is government owned. Uh, but it's pretty bad. The head of Australia Post is the highest paid public servant. Really? In the world or just in Australia? What is the highest... Highest... Public... Uh, highest paying public servant job in Oz. Who is Australia's pu highest paid public servant? The overall top earner was Queensland Treasury Corporation Chief Executive Philip Noble. I'm just seeing it. I'm just going through a top 10 list now to see if they made it onto the top 10 list. Oh no, this is top 10 bureaucrats, not public servants. I don't know. Twenty seven public servants earning more than a million dollars. Jesus. Parliament may house oh, the corridors. God. Go away. Uh, okay, so the CEO of NBN Co. has the largest remuneration package of $3.15 billion. Then is Paul Broad of the Snowy Hydro Project. Then... Third and fourth spots are Christine Holgate and Bob Black, ex-CEO and ex-COO of Australia Post. So maybe that was true once upon a time, but currently the highest paid public servant in Australia is uh, uh, MBN Co. Followed by Snowy Hydro. So there you go. All right. Get fact checked, Arch. Don't come in here sp spouting misinformation. Gee whiz. <sighs> Gee whiz. Yeah, Arch. No, that's that's very interesting. Thank you for sharing. It's been years since I've been in Australia. It feel, honestly, it still feels like it's been a couple of months. It's hard to believe that you've been gone for so long. Exactly, Stajan. That's what I'm saying. I don't read the Australian Times. <laughs> what? We, do, are, you, are you saying, Arch... That when you lived in Australia, your primary source of a, of information was the Australian Times. Excuse me. Question mark. <laughs> Had it with my Vegemite scroll. With you. Really. <laughs> Thanks, Red Talon. Uh. 
a scroll and a stroll through the Aussie times. Dear God, that is terrible. Chat, we're going to pause it there. We need to get ready to swap over to our sponsored segment. Oh my God, I'm just... Oh dear. Dear, oh dear. What a, what a time. Uh, so chat, thank you. If you are here just exclusively for RimWorld content, I understand. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Um, if you don't mind hanging around and watching some sponsored segment, maybe see what the game is like before you uh, tune out, uh, I would really, uh, would really help me out. I would really appreciate it. Um, because sponsored segments help to pay my wage as a full-time content creator. Um, so if you do feel like sticking around, thank you. Uh, but if you are going to part ways, I understand. And uh, thank you. We will be back live again on Friday. Uh, maybe I'm thinking GeoGuessr on Friday. But we'll be definitely playing more RimWorld on Sunday if you're just here for RimWorld. Um, but yeah. We're going to be playing uh, an MMO, a strategy MMO. It's free to play. Uh, it's called, I was going to say Battletech, Battletech, no, is that right? Uh, Battle Dawn, there we go, thank you, Battle Dawn 2, Terror Reborn, yeah, exactly, see, I know what I'm doing, I'm a professional, uh, Annie, thank you so much for hanging out, thanks for chatting along with us, we'll see you next time, take care. No worries, Robot Mystic. Yeah. Pro streamer. Exactly. If I play this too, can I fight you? I think so. I think there is PvP. Uh, I was having a little bit of look at the Steam reviews earlier. And it's always a little bit of a, a double-edged sword when you look at Steam reviews for games you haven't played before. Because Steam can be pretty harsh with the criticism. And I've done, I've played games and enjoyed games that have, you know, low reviews before. Uh, and this does have a mixed review on Steam currently. And apparently it does have some pay to win mechanics in it, which given it's free to play doesn't necessarily surprise me. I'm hoping it doesn't stray into the territory of, uh, you know, kind of like mobile gaming kind of corniness. Uh, but like I said, we'll try it. We'll see how it goes. Uh, thanks for the lurk, Nick, and thank you again for the raid. I really appreciate it, and um, yeah, go get some well-deserved rest. Uh, that way, you'll have more energy tomorrow for more Ragnarok. Uh, exactly, Arch, yeah, exactly. I play Worm. I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> That's right, Master Pilot Watch. The reason I had Battletech on my brain is because we got raided by somebody earlier tonight who was playing uh, Battletech, actually. That's, that's why the name was in my brain. That's my, that's my justification and excuse. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess that's a, that's a whole, a whole thing. Uh, let's, let's get ready here. Change things over. Uh, bah, 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 bah. change that. Okay. Uh, and hey, Skull Vulcan. Sorry, I, I did see you come in. I got a little bit sidetracked as you did, but I hope you're doing well, Vulcan. It's good to see you. Um, Battle, Battle Dawn 2. Battle Dawn 2. Terror Reborn. There we go. Perfect. Update there. Quit out of that. Perfect. All right, let's launch the game. Uh, oh, Steam apparently was unable to sync my 
test of whether I can launch the game earlier. Which I'm sure will be fine. So chat! You may be wondering, what the heck is Battle Dawn 2? Terror Reborn. Well, Battle Dawn 2 is a skill-based strategy MMO uh, where clever moves and cunning strategies uh, with clever moves and stunning strategies, even the smallest newer player can topple a giant no matter how big your empire, it can all come down to one move. It's team-based. Uh, apparently, it's very community-oriented. Uh, making some friends for life. Uh, and there is different servers where you can play at different speeds for fast gameplay. Or you can have slower gameplay as well. Uh, and apparently, the game frequently gets compared to games like Risk and Chess as single moves can make all the difference. And I like Risk, and I like Chess. So, yeah, I'm... I, the idea of a strategy MMO as well, I think, is an interesting one. I like MMOs, I like strategy games. So, we'll give it a try, see how we go. Hey, Bloom and Reaver, good to see you. How you doing? Have I gone to Coles for my roast chicken with Vegemite and cheesy stuffing? We were talking about this earlier on. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and see if I can get one because I, I only learned this was a thing tonight. Who really likes chess though? A lot of people. Chess is like super popular these days. It's like mainstream popular, even. Like it's made a full resurgent and everything. You just saw it and you're terrified. It sounds interesting though. I'm I'm keen to give it a go. I'm keen to give it a go. Uh, now chat, if you are still sticking around for the sponsored segment and you are over on Twitter as well, uh, one thing that I'd ask you to do, just to do me a little favor, uh, is to put our going or interact with our going live tweet for our sponsored segment. Uh, doing so helps uh, me. Uh, and helps our sponsor, and um, yeah, I would really appreciate it, and I'm sure they would really appreciate it too. Um, link is in the chat. No worries, Rasmus. Thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. Go have a good day at work, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Uh, but yeah, this game is free to play, and apparently it is, uh, it is multi, like team-based. So I don't know whether there will be the opportunity if anybody else is thinking of playing this. Uh, it's only a one gig download. So if people want to maybe play as well and we can see if we can make maybe make our own faction or something. I, I don't know how it works. Who knows? We'll see. <laughs> All good, Loaf. I understand. Uh, huh. Avatar skills. Interesting. Okay. Let's just play. Tutorial. Hello and welcome to Battle Dawn. I'm your instructor and I'm here to make sure you are ready for battle. Battle Dawn is a complex game where only the best are able to conquer the world. That's why I'd recommend you check out the tutorial with me. You can also join a simulation game where all new players can play together and discover the joy of war. If you skip, you won't be able to play the tutorial again. Do you want to start the tutorial now? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, seems kind of an odd choice that they won't let you to go back and play the tutorial if you need to at a later time. But okay. Welcome to Battle Dawn 2. Terror Reborn, a game of strategy, diplomacy, and skill. Battle Dawn 2 can also be played on your phone, so make sure to check out your mobile marketplace. Oh, I did not know that. I'm your instructor, and we will cover all the basic gameplay. Let's dive into this. In Battle Dawn 2, uh, Battle Dawn, your main objective is to dominate the world. I will teach you everything you need. To <laughs> Stop telling me you'll teach me and teach me. Let's come on map control. Let's so zoom in using the mouse. Okay. Can also pan the map using my mouse. Cool. 
Let's establish our colony. Select a location by panning and zooming to the maximum, then click on an unoccupied territory to place your colony. Locations where you cannot place your colony appear as red dots on the map. Uh, wow, okay. Jeez. Europe is kind of busy, huh? What about if we... Can we go down to Australia, perhaps? Ooh, we can go down to Australia. Uh, Cam Marco, how you doing? Good to see you. Welcome in. <laughs> I know, right, Mini Strong? Uh, Cat Marco, thank you so much for the raid. How was your stream? How are you? Can we get a, a shout out, please? For uh, Captain Marco. Thank you, Friendly Kitten. Uh, playing some Scum. Dude, I was I was watching a YouTube video yesterday about Scum. And it looks like it's come a really, really long way. How was it? How is it? Because I, I might give it a try at some stage. You reached your follow goal of 69. Nice. So, chat... What I'm going to need you to do is go over to Captain Marco's stream and drop a follow just to ruin that beautiful number. Use this as an opportunity to not only support a fellow content creator on Twitch, but as an opportunity to ruin somebody's day. Uh, so go, go give them a follow. It's a really good game. Hell yeah. I love it. This game is going to be huge. Yeah, it's, it's big, right? It's pretty big. Wow, we can even settle out on, like... I think this is New Caledonia? Uh... Is this Fiji? And then, like, over here you got, like, Vanuatu? I, I don't know. I'm not particularly good at my... Uh... Particularly good at my... Geography. <laughs> Oh, did you, Captain? It's fine. I was just telling people to go grief you by taking away your, your nice number. New Caledonia and Fiji. Correct. Nice. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm better than I thought, robot. There you go, Captain Marco. Thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you, everybody, for going to grief Captain Marco. I appreciate it. I'm confused this isn't Geogazza. <laughs> yeah. Man, you know what? I, I want to do a stream where I try to draw a map of the world from memory. Uh, and see how many countries I forget and how many I get wrong. I can go for like Madagascar. I don't know. There's a surprising number of settlements in the Sahara. <laughs> that's That's kind of remarkable to me. Uh, Brazil's fairly scarcely populated. North America also not that populated. Canada, got a bit going on. This is, uh, the Galapagos, right? This person apparently has a nuke? Of course. Everybody knows that the... Wait, is there people... <gasps> There's people down... We could have an Antarctic base. Wow. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. Could go Philippines. India. Is it just me or does India look really small on this map? It looks very squashed. It's a very, like, like, is that just, is that just me, chat? Or does India look really small in comparison to Africa here? Uh, it kind of is, Master Pilot Wash, going through that villain. I think we just go for Australia, right? Uh, I don't know where we're going to settle in Australia. Maybe we go, like, coastal Victoria, maybe. We could go, like, along the, the Great Australian Bight. Maybe just, like... Oh, this person's already s settled where Uluru, Uluru is. It's just me? Okay. Sure, Robot Mystic. Uh, you bloody legend. 
you bloody legend. Captain Marco, thank you so much for the first time sub. I really appreciate that. That's too kind of you, bringing you folks over here and subscribing. Thank you so much. Uh, Floyd, hello there. Great to see you. Can we get a shout out for Floyd, please? I could spend all day at this. I don't know what I'm doing. This is just a tutorial. Let's, let's just place it down. Let's go on, on the coast here. I mean, Oscar, that's very specific. I would be impressed if that's a thing. We can do the desert, maybe. Are you sure you want to build your colony here? You'll be able to relocate later in the game. Sure, we're in the forest. So that gives us extra metal and extra water, I guess. Oh, there are four types of terrains in Battle Dawn. Forest, field, desert, and permafrost. Each one will influence your colony's production in a different way. Try different map types to pick the one that you like best. Oh, okay. So I'm guessing that... I'm guessing that Antarctica will be permafrost. So permafrost means <laughs> that we just get minus 5% electricity. That seems like a suboptimal choice. What is this island down here? Is this like... Oh, is this like one of those weird French colony islands down here? Is this like a uh, Reunion Island or something, maybe? I, I don't... No, it's too far south, right? I don't know. I'm still in the Rimworld category? No, I'm not. I'm not, though. Am I? Is it not updating for some reason? No, it's showing that it is. Yeah. Typical Forlorn trying to grief us. Trying to hide his... His malicious intent with, uh... Kindness. Okay, alright, cool. We're all good. Uh, right, what was the other one? Desert. So, I'm assuming the Sahara is going to be desert, right? There's a lot of people in desert. Oh, what? what? <laughs> How? This is the Sahara, right? This is the middle of the Sahara. Why is it field? Uh, so, the terrain field gives us 5% electricity and 5% population, maybe? Manpower? Uh, where would have desert, then? Maybe, maybe the center of Australia is considered desert? Yeah, desert is 5% less population. Heard Island of McDonald's Island. Okay. Thanks, Captain Marco. Yeah, I wasn't sure. All good, Robot Mystic. Go get some rest. Go look after yourself. I appreciate you hanging out with us. Um, yeah, let's let's settle down here on the coast. We'll take the 5% minerals and 5% water. Please all my Nordic viewers and mod. No, thank you. That's the last thing I want. Loaf. <laughs> now I have to choose between three factions. They will grant you specific bonuses. Be careful. You won't be able to turn back for this harvest. So choose wisely. So I think the harvest is the server or the instance that you're put into. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. Welcome to Battle Dawn. What? It's welcomed me multiple times. <laughs> Welcome me less. Uh, please select your faction. Each one will provide you with a specific bonus. Okay. So Builder gets 5% to resource production. Warrior gives us 5% to all unit damage. And Diplomat gives us 5% to units received damage. So it feels like Warrior and Diplomat kind of cancel each other out. Whereas if I pick Builder, that feels like the, the happy middle ground. Chew! Hello there, Chew. It's so good to see you. Welcome in. Can we get a shout out for Chew, please?
take care captain marco thank you again for the raid uh really appreciate it thank you so much for the sub as well uh we'll see you next time take care i don't i'm not a hundred percent sure duke of dupont I, I assume because this is a tutorial we'll get to choose again but i'm gonna go build up let's take a closer look at your colony after your colony finishes landing click the colony button in the top left of your screen or double click the colony building directly on the world map to open the colony view. Okay, this is the colony view. You can manage every colony structure here. You already have some buildings up, but can also build some new ones. Let's click on an empty slot. Here is the construction panel, where you can build new structures to unlock some technologies. Let's build a farm to feed your workers. Avatar chamber. Splicing chamber. Radar. Resource converter. Turrets. Scanners. Technology lab. Unlock the machine gun. Wow, oh, okay. All right, let's do uh, farm. It'll increase our population by 60 a day. And it'll cost us 50 mineral. Luckily, we've got 4,450 4, minerals. Let's cover the resources. There are four types of resources in Battle Dawn. Metal, oil, energy, and population. You can use your current stacks at the top center of your screen. You gather resources as time passes, even when you are logged off the game. Oh. Well, I guess that makes sense since it's an, M since it's an M M M M M MMO. Farm, where you can choose machine gun. <laughs> hey, Zajo, good to see you. How are you today? Metal is the most important resource. It is used for building structures, units, outposts, and missiles. Ooh. Your colony has a metal mine included, which means you will extract metal continuously. Let's upgrade it to speed up the paste. Uh, let's click on the nine. Then hit the upgrade button. Upgrade this structure. 500 me Okay, so 500 metal is not gonna go as far as I thought it was. Uh, metal production is then increased to 414 per hour. It's a very specific amount. Sure. It'll also cost us some water. Good. Now the oil. Oh, <laughs> not water. Oil. Uh, it is used for building structures and moving your squads. That makes sense. It will gradually get more important over the course of the game. Your colony has an oil well that can be upgraded later. Energy is used for intelligence and communication. Remember that collecting information is crucial in warfare. This resource needs an energy reactor in, uh, to be generated. Your colony has it by default. Population is a great way to develop your colony and your army. It has a lot of usefulness. They boost the resources and maintain your colony. It needs food to develop their growth. You can extend their growth by upgrading the farm you just built. Blue tokens allow you to buy boost in the marketplace to get ahead in resources when you need it. You can earn them by attacking the wreckage or completing the missions. Okay, so obviously that's the the payment element uh, or the marketplace element that we talked about earlier with the the reviews and stuff. It I don't I'm not 100 percent sure, Loaf. I've not played this before. I'm playing it for the first time tonight. Um, I think it is real time strategy, um, but we we're, we're doing our best, doing our best. Uh, red tokens act the same as blue tokens, but are bought with real currency. Oh, okay. So, sorry. No, these ones are earned in-game. The red tokens are the bought ones. They allow you to buy items for your avatar. So, some uh, vanity items, which is fine. I'm totally okay with vanity items in-game. Remember to check out the marketplace. Sure. True, Loaf. Yeah. In Battle Dawn, you can train units and send them to battle to expand your territory. 
they are also essential in defending your colony in case you get attacked. The splicing chamber is the structure that allows you to produce items, uh, units and manage your army. Now let's click on the splicing chamber. This structure can be upgraded like any other and will allow us to produce various units if you choose to do so. You can check out the technology lab for more options. Let's take a look at the unit creation process. I hope you're doing well, Chew. It's lovely to see you. Uh, this is the army management window. Oh my god, look at this unit. <laughs> what is this? Uh, it's like a saber-toothed tiger with a giant cannon on its back with crab claws. That's so cool. Uh, Tiggy. <laughs> That's amazing. This is the army management window. On the left side, you'll have a unit creation panel where you choose the body, weapons, and... Act Wait, do we actually get different... Oh, you actually get to genetic... That's why it's called a splicing lab, because you're actually genetically creating your own army units. That's kind of cool. I dig that. That is a cool mechanic. Uh, every unit in Battle Dawn are unique and have their own statistics, pros and cons. That's, that's pretty cool. The unit's body determines its life and the damage it deals to other units. For now, you can only choose Tiger Fang, which is a basic, cheap unit useful to expand your army quickly. The weapon determines the efficiency of the unit depending on the opposing unit body. So that I guess that will be, have some kind of like uh, rock, paper, scissor kind of uh, structure or something. Oh geez, bloody. <laughs> wow. At least except for food. Weapon determines the efficiency of the unit depending on the opposing unit body. In battle, the attacker will target the defending unit with the least... Of the, the unit with the less efficient defense against its weapon. Okay, so it'll target the weakest unit. That makes sense. It's like Pokemons, except... Not at all like Pokemons. <laughs> okay, actually, yeah, with the unit typing. Yeah, actually, yeah, that is kind of like Pokemon. Yeah, you're right. Attributes can affect all the unit statistics. Range determines at what round the unit attacks. Uh, unit starts attacking in battle. Units with a high range will start attacking earlier. This, this is the unit card that you're about to produce. Their final statistics. Now, let's produce our first Tiger Fangs. Let's do it. Move the slider at the bottom left of the window to produce at least three tiger fangs. Boom. We did it. Hey, Orkanaut. We're gonna do our damnedest. To create our first units, we'll have to spend 300 metal and three population. Wow, we are chewing through metal. Jeez. Then we hit the create button. Boom. On the right, there is the unit production panel. Your tiger fangs are currently in culture? And will be available for battle when the timer reaches zero. Don't know if that's the right word that they were looking for. That might be, that might be a translation error. I'm not sure. Maybe that's just what they call it. Maybe they're being cultured. Maybe it's like a Petri dish and they're being cultured in the Petri dish. Cultivation, perhaps. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, they'll be they'll be uh, available once the timer reaches zero. So in like ten minutes, uh, you can cancel the unit production at any time to refund your resources, and you can hurry them up to fast to fasten the production process, to speed up the production process. Let's try to do so. Click on the green hurry button at the top of the unit card. And, or you can wait for them to be ready. So we can hurry them for two of our population. So basically we feed them two, two humans. And they'll grow faster. Oh, it's two humans per... Per thing. 
So hurry your units and make them available faster. You need to spend extra population. Now hurry at least one of your tiger fangs by moving the slider and clicking confirm. All right, confirm. Our units are now ready for combat. As you can see, your capacity is limited to your reserves and only allow for a maximum number of units at once. Okay. To free some space and to be able to send your units into battle, we'll need to transfer them into squads. Okay. Click on the squad. I've only got one Tiggy at the moment, so... Oh, is it kind of like a card game? I don't know. Interesting. Uh, click the squad management button. Okay. On the left is the squad management panel. We'll make our first squad together. Click on the create now button, then choose a name for your squad and hit the confirm button. Okay. Squad one is going to be uh, Shui Squad Alpha. There we go. Perfect. We can transfer the tiger fangs we produce into the new squad. You can do so by clicking the card once with the squad selected in the right column or drag and drop the unit card into the squad panel. Your squads have limited capacity as well. Okay, so they're limited to 30 of our 60 overall unit capacity. Uh, but remember, when a unit is in a squad, it's not in your reserves oh okay so this is our reserve capacity and this is our like deployed units okay i understand what's going on here only squads can be moved on the world map if you choose to leave your units in your reserves they will still defend your colony if you get attacked this is all you need to know about the unit creation and squad management process that's all we need to know chat it's everything We've assigned our first Tiggy to Shui Squad Alpha. And we can close out of that. All right, let's go to the world map. Whoop. What is this? There's a thing flying around my base. Here you can see your avatar. Avatar. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's it answering that question. Avatars are represented as flying whales docked at your colony which is the appearance that all of your squads will take. That's pretty cool. I do dig flying at the whales. Click the avatar button located at the top bar. Okay. Good. Whenever your avatar gains a new level by participating in battles, you gain avatar points. Now, if you have one avatar point available, you can choose one passive skill. Do it wisely, because it will cost you red tokens to redistribute them. Okay. So we can either choose Battle Aura, which boosts the damage done by units fighting alongside your avatar by 1%, or we can do Tactical Management, which decreases the damage taken by units fighting alongside our avatar by 1%. So I think from a theory standpoint, Battle Aura should be better than Tactical Management. Purely because if a battle is completed 1% faster, then there is less opportunity for damage to be dealt against you. Whereas if a battle takes 1% longer, then it's more chance to be damage done against you. Does that make sense? So I think we take Battle Aura here. Is that bad logic? That might be bad logic. <laughs> Your avatar exists in all the harvests you have joined, but their equipment can be different from one game to another. Remember, the avatar is a support unit. It cannot attack, but only boosts the unit in the same structure or squads launched at the same time. Okay, I guess that'll make more sense once we're actually getting into more of the combat stuff. If you lose your avatar, it can be resurrected by the avatar chamber. It is a colony structure that you have to build. Now it's time to join other players and create alliances. Ooh. Okay, that's all good. That's all good. It was very, very funny. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for that. I'm all for the chaos. I hope you're doing well today. 
Uh, mods, can we get a shout out for Orconaut, please? If there are any mods around? Excuse me. Dear, oh dear. Oh, all good. Okay, all good. Thank you, friendly kitten. Oh, are you on, are you are you addicted to Marvel Snap now, Orconaut? Okay, Katie, enjoy your rim mod sesh. Enjoy. Uh, on the real battlefield, you'll need to either negotiate with alliance leaders or to join them or create your own alliances. Close the avatar window. Okay. Alliances are crucial to conquer and defend structures as it's nearly impossible to do it alone. Let's try, let's try to be a part of an alliance or either create a new one. So is this actually a real game world? Oh, I guess so. Uh, no, it's not because it's just put me straight in there. Uh, congratulations, we've joined the Alliance 5. Machiavelli Don and Disc. Wait, no, these must be new players. These must be players as well. Last online two days ago, 11... Okay. All right. I guess. Uh, when we're finished, do not hesitate to talk with other members or recruit new ones. Let's move on. with other people i don't know you'll certainly build an army soon they need to move in order to fight and expand your territory to do so we'll need some squads ready first if you want to send a squad on a neutral or hostile location you'll need also need metal to mine and an oil well level three before sending your squads anywhere whenever you're ready to send units you can click on the squad orbiting around the, a colony a trajectory is following your mouse. Okay. Click a destination and a settings pop-up will appear. This is where all the travel information is displayed. You can click on the destination you want, but make sure you have enough oil to make the trip. Otherwise, that could be awkward, right? If your squad lands on a building occupied by enemies, uh, enemy units, a fight will occur. The battle starts after a preparation time. It means that any other squad joining the fight during this time will take part in the battle. Oh, I see. So I guess that's like kind of like the the one of the big strategy elements is trying to decide, okay, am I going to commit to this? Am I going to try and lure people into a fight and then try and, you know, commit them to this fight and then send in a bigger force to wipe out their army or something like that? That's that's that makes sense. After this period, the fight occurs instantaneously. Uh the fight is round based. They go on until one side is totally annihilated. Every unit has health points, damage, and range. If HP re reaches zero, the unit dies. You regenerate HP over time. Damage represents the raw power of a unit without any modifiers like resistance. Range defines at what round, uh, which round the unit will start to fire at the enemy. The more range a unit has, the earlier it will shoot. It also is used to define the targeting priority. Units are composed of a body, a weapon, and an attribute. Each of these components have basic statistics. Make the basic statistics vary. So we can see what they're good against and see what they're weak against. So this is this the pa <laughs> Papa Shark, which how cool is this artwork, by the way? Is a shark that is half squid with crab claws and a giant cannon on its back. <laughs> so, so ridiculous. I love it. Uh, apparently it's weak against bullets though. The secret weapon of the, the crab squid is, is bullets. It is straight out of arc, yeah. Um... On the battle cards, you can see how bodies are resistant to certain weapons. How it is damage, uh, sorry, is represented by percentage efficiency. Attributes tend to modify the statistics directly: HP, damage, and RNG. Ooh, wait, what? It is represented by a percentage efficiency. Okay, I guess the real 
cards will have a percentage efficiency because there's no percentage on here. Attributes tend to modify the statistics directly. Okay, so our health, our damage, and our RNG will affect that. Don't forget to upgrade the splicing chamber to unlock new bodies and the technology lab to access new weapons and attributes. It's important to know that every unit tries to shoot at the weakest body depending on the weapons they have. They start by closing, start by the closest ones to further ones. So flamethrower weapons apparently get the highest priority then we got our range ones. Oh, so hang on. So range one, range two, range three. So higher range. So does it consider range to be? So it must mean that when it says the highest range is the lowest number. So it must be like a rank one range because these are the turn orders. So first, second, third, fourth, and then the range three is last. And I don't know, maybe this will make more sense once we're actually fighting, I don't know. Uh, here is a chart to remember the targeting priorities depending on the weapon Hey, Mr. Lit. Good to see you. Welcome in. Uh, what? <laughs> so, Octo Shark, Mammoth Sloth, Tiger Fang, Avatar, Vampire Cobra, <laughs> Defensive Turrets? Is this the weapon? So, flamethrowers will target. Tiger Fangs, Octoshark, Mamo. Okay. Maybe that's... So, basically, everything will target everything before Vampire Cobras, Avatars, and Defensive Turrets. I think. Uh, it's still too early to say, Mr. Lit. We've only just started. Uh, we're still doing the tutorial. I have to admit, I'm a little bit confused right now because it's trying to teach us combat without actually letting us experience combat so it doesn't make a lot of sense to me right now but i'm hoping it will soon uh here is a chart to remember the targeting priorities depending on the weapon equipped if two opponents have the same body then the unit uses the attribute to prioritize the target okay right after each battle a battle report is generated you can access it through the events menu you can see every unit of the attackers and defenders. You have a button to review each round and see how much damage has been done. A graphic representation of units displayed uh, displays the loss by highlighting the unit's quality in red and a whole picture when no units are left. Okay. I think I understand what that means. Just right. How you doing? Welcome in. Thank you for the raid. How was your stream? I hope you had a good one, dude. Uh, can we get a shout out for, for Just Right? DRF, welcome back. Good to see you. I hope you're well. Sovereignty as well. Hello, hello. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Hello there. Were you playing some uh, cities tonight? Playing some... Oh, no, you were on the Dead Space. That's right. How is Dead Space going, dude? I've been enjoying your clips and everything that you've been putting up on, uh, on Twitter. I hope you had a good one. Uh, and if you're coming over from uh, Just Right Stream... Hi, I'm Bloody Drongo. It's good to see you. All the tentacles. Okay. Well, luckily, we've got tentacles here as well. So, you know, best of both worlds, right? Uh, 
Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go follow if you like City Skylines. Go go follow. Uh, go follow Just Right. It is a great game. It is a very great game. Battle Dawn is a cooperation game against other groups of players. You can fight with your alliance members by sending squads together at the same time to the same spot. To be sure they land within the preparation time before battle, you can click on a friendly squad moving. Okay. I think that, I understand that. Then hit the join squad button. They will synchronize to land together and join forces to fight side by side. You're almost done with the basics. Nice job. The last thing before you can play on your own. Don't hesitate to send messages to mentor players if you need any. Help. You can recognize them by the little medal near their name on the playlist. Wait, so this actually is a real in-game instance. This isn't just a tutorial world. To guide you on your journey, you can now choose a type of mission. Okay, I was going to say, what, what am I going to do? I feel a little bit lost right now. That makes sense. <laughs> Apparently so, DRF. Yeah. Uh, you're playing Dead Space 3 and oh my god, it turned into a rage stream. The game design in that game is something I'm not a fan of, especially in the midsection so far. Okay, that's a shame. I have heard that Dead Space 3 is a bit of a drop-off uh, in terms of the quality from the first two games. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, Ads. It's an MMO strategy game. It's a free-to-play MMO strategy game. So uh, I think it's closer to Civ. But it describes itself as being compared to games like chess and risk. So, yeah, I don't know. But we haven't done any combat yet. I'm still learning the basics and stuff. So we'll see. I'm a little bit disappointed that the tutorial didn't actually feature any combat because I still have no idea what that actually looks like. It's explained what it is, but I always prefer a tutorial that actually gets you to do the thing. So you understand what you're actually being taught. Uh, completing a campaign will help you choose a playstyle and earn rewards for your avatar. For now, you can only follow the basic campaign. Click on it. The mission window presents you with different objectives of a campaign. Completing a mission will give you blue tokens. Start. Try starting the basic campaign now. Yes. This is the mission header, showing you the next three missions you have to complete. You can complete every mission of a campaign in any particular order, so make sure to check the mission window once in a while. Congratulations, you're now ready to play Battle Dawn 2 Terror Reborn. Have fun on the battlefield, and don't forget, you can always ask for help. I feel a little bit lost, that... Okay, we're ready, chat, we're live. We're in. It's battle time. Uh, so apparently our first quest is to send a chat message. Okay. Exact. For sure, just right. Yeah. That's a good, they've been good snippets. Eight bullets between us and we need to destroy 16 targets. Oh no. Uh, that's... Yeah, that's really bad game design that's awful yeah i'm sorry to hear that dude uh all right order window radar where can i chat community window rename alliances talk with mates to plan your moves so how do i talk to my alliance members Can I send this person a message? Hi. <laughs> the last online two days ago, so I don't know. Mission complete. Woohoo! We're doing it. We're doing it, chat. Uh, next, we need to update our biography. Where do I do that? Uh... Missions? 
send a friend's request. Oh, let's send let's send a friend request to our clan boss. Uh, oh, I can delegate orders to them. Vote? How do I friend them? Where's your colony? Oh, so your colony is in like Eastern Russia. Oh, so I can open a, pro pro a player's profile from their city. Okay, that makes sense. Is there a better way to store stone chunks? They don't seem to be able to go onto shelves and they currently take up so much space. Not really. There's not a great way to store chunks legacy. Uh, my recommendation is to process chunks into bricks because uh, bricks are a lot easier to store than chunks and also are more useful. Um, but yeah, storing chunks is a very space... A, a very big space commitment. Okay, they're at 60 times speed and they have no friends. Uh, I'm going to send them a friend request. Uh, hi. <laughs> Be my friend. Question mark? Friend request sent. Perfect. And another mission completed, chat. We're doing it. Hey, Patch Tech. Good to see you. Any dead bodies in here? No. No, not yet. Is this offline? Uh, no, this is a MMO strategy game. So these are all other players, apparently. Uh, so I don't really know what to quite expect here. So we are, we're, we're learning. Uh, update my biography. Where do I update my biography? Is it under avatar? I need an avatar chamber to change my gear. Oh, global. And the last global message was sent 10 hours ago. I wonder how many... How many players play this game? Uh, simulation speed people? I guess this is the clan chat, which has no messages. Okay. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I've, I've, at least you got it out of your system just right. At least you got it out of your system. Where do I upgrade my... Oh, we've got events. What are events? No, no events. It said I had notifications, though. Oh, here we go. I have a daily boost available. Pick it up get bonus claim your daily bonus prize we get 440 oil sure okay that was a quest item so good we ticked that off upgrade the farm to level two okay let's get that happening shall we so there's our farm let's upgrade it to level two that'll take 400 metal and 100 oil boom That'll take 20 seconds to upgrade. We need to build an outpost. Outposts help you control the map and can be upgraded later. You need a level two farm to build one. Okay. Can I click on this and get it to take me to where I need to do things? Statistics. Uh, there we go. We got our farm built. Upgrade the oil well to level two. Okay, let's do that. We can do that. Uh, oil well. There we go. Upgrade that. 250 metal, 100 oil. Okay, that one takes a little bit longer than the farm. Two minutes on that. That will give us time to look for where I can upgrade my biography. Uh, oh, can I open up my own player profile from the settlement? Is that how I'm going to do it? Aha! Okay, chat. This is where we get creative. Uh, eons ago, there was a man known as Drongo. This man was terrible 
to uh, to be hold, but yet nobody could look away. He, he waft, he wafted around with the faint smell, no, 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 the faint musk of beer stained shoes and a can-do attitude around him. Too real. I know, right? Uh, uh, he's okay. Lefin. What do we think, chat? Does anybody have any other suggestions to what we can add into our our very important biography right now. Wait, what? What? <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Okay, for some reason when I populated it, didn't, it didn't uh, load correctly. <laughs> it was like scrolled off. Uh, but here we go. Biography. Eons ago, there was a man named, uh, known as Drongo. This man was terrible to behold. But yet nobody could look away. He wafted around with the faint musk of beer-stained shoes and a can-do attitude around him. He's okay. Lefin. <laughs> How dare you, just right? Too soon. Too soon. Okay. All right. We've done that. Uh, we need to create some more Tiger Fang units. So let's go ahead and do that. Army management window. Let's do... Let's make 10 more units. I'm sure we'll need them. It'll cost us a th uh, 100 metal and one population? Or one population each. I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, hunt. Yeah, yeah. It costs us a thousand metal and 10 people. Yeah, sure. So now we need to upgrade our well to le oil level three. So 500 metal, 500 oil. Sure, get that underway. We also need to upgrade our metal mine to level three. 500 metal, 250 oil. Perfect. Get that going. That one's taking a lot less time. Uh, build an outpost. So where do outposts go here? Turrets, resource converter, convert oil to energy. I see. Turrets, scan and covert operations. There we go. Another mission completed. We can upgrade our farm to level three now. 500 metal, 250 oil. Starting to run low on metal. Okay, so maybe if we go back to world map, can we make a outpost out here, perhaps? Uh, build an outpost. Are we winning? I don't think we're losing, Meg. But I'm not sure, <laughs> to be honest with you. Also, what is this? A metal tree home greatly increases your alliance metal production when controlled. Metal tree home. What? I should have settled on this. None of my squads can be sent here. We need at least a level three metal line and a level three oil well to send your squads to an enemy locate. Oh, and they spelt <laughs> they spelt enemy <laughs> wrong. Bless. Uh, okay. I guess it's controlled. How do I tell if it's controlled by somebody else? It looks close to Sydney. You know what? That probably is Sydney. You're right. 
Or is Sydney more here-ish? Also, why does this coast look like a desert? Is that meant maybe meant to be like one giant beach? A proto-human camp can be raided for population. Wait, so what's this? An unknown outpost. Wait, so do I need to capture an outpost? Hmm. Uh, radar. Okay, we've got nobody ingoing, outgoing, or moving. Okay, sure. Oh, here we go. Build an outpost at a selected position. Ah, oh, here we go. All right. So, I guess we build an outpost kind of in between. Because I guess going for the metal tree is a good idea, right? We're about to build an outpost. 500 metal, 300 oil, and 15 manpower. Sure. Okay. We did it. Uh, create a squad with one tiger thing in it. Okay. One tiger thing in it. I think we can do that. Uh, army management. So we've got two of these here. We've got five minutes until the rest of these finish. Oh, this gives us a summary of our resource production per hour. So we're getting 800 metal per hour. That's not much considering how quickly we've gone through the amount of metal that we've got at the moment. Uh, how do I go back into my squad management? I've forgotten. Do I... Oh, is it this button? Here we go. Squad management menu. Here we go. All right, let's put our... Put those two into there, and then we'll create a new one. Shui Squad Gamma. There we go. Now, can I move one of these into here? So we got... Then we got two squads. There we go. There we go. We created a squad with one tiger thing in it. Perfect. Now we need to send a squad to our outpost. To keep your outpost safe, the more you send, the better your defense will be in case of incoming attack. That makes sense. Upgrade an energy reactor to level 2. I don't know if I'm going to have enough resources for this. Yeah, I don't. I'm missing 500 metal to do that. Uh, so let's go to the world view. And send squad to the building. So let's just send the one unit there. So it takes two minutes, 40 seconds to get there. Uh, it'll arrive there in a couple of minutes, sure. Cool. Let's do it. Now, we've completed another mission. So our new missions are upgrade the energy reactor to level 2 and upgrade our metal mine to level 4 and energy reactor to level 3, all of which I don't think I can do. But maybe we'll get some resources from our outpost, I'm not sure. <laughs> we just founded Canberra. Meg, you are terrible at maps. Canberra's like here. <laughs> it's like over here probably closer to this it's like here-ish <laughs> wait wait what what it's the camera's not this close to the coast it's not this close to the coast <laughs> it's not madagascar i'm terrible at maps what it's not this this is hang on i <laughs> map of australia Hang on, where's, where's Google Maps?
Oh, actually, you know what? You're closer than I was saying. All right. Fair, fair play. Fair play. So Canberra's here. I was saying it's like here-ish, but you're right. It is probably about here. Yeah. All right. Look, I'll, I'll have some humble pie. I, I suppose I'm ready for dessert. That is, that is closer to the coast than I, I thought it was. I'm just that good. All right, fine, sure. I'm glad you're very humble, Meg. It is a still like a two hour drive from Canberra to the coast. Like, I mean, Australia's perspective is just tough to get your head around. The tree's closer to Sydney than I think it is. Probably. Who knows? I think it's still a little bit north of where the tree is. Wait, who's this? Who dat? Oh, this is my squad. This is my squad. That's my squad's avatar. So should we go to... Should we go to the metal tree? I don't know if there's anybody there, but... So it'll take like four minutes to get there. Let's find out if there's any metal at this tree. But we need more metal, so we might as well. Because right now, I think, unless there's a big portion of the game that I'm missing, it's going to be a, a, a fair bit of waiting now, just to see what is going to happen here. Which is fine. I play a lot of slow games. I guess while we wait, we can look at the other bits in the menu here. So the radar menu. Okay, so this shows my squad going to the metal tree. And there's nobody incoming, so that's good news. Uh, we don't have a radar structure to look at the satellite. We don't have any resources to build another outpost. Look at the order window. Okay, so that's... We have no agents. Outpost. Conquers. And no alliance orders. Okay. Yeah, the music is good. Yeah, it's just chipping away there. Uh, who was in our alliance again? We're, we looked at where our... One of our friends is. Where is this one? Also, both of them are actually up here in... Maybe I should have allied with somebody closer. I mean, it just put me into an alliance. I didn't get to choose, did I? But both of these guys are up in Eastern Russia. Although it did say... Oh, I can turn it, turn it down. Sure. Yeah. I can turn it down. There we go. What is that? What are you? Oh, it's a teleport gate. What the heck? There's teleport gates all over. There's not many, not many people hanging out on Japan. It did say during the tutorial that I'd have the opportunity to move later on. Oh, we have our extra units now. Perfect. Hey, Ras, good to see you. How are you today? It looks like this squad is getting close now. Does it give me a, a countdown? Uh, outgoing. Here we go. 40 seconds until we arrive at the metal tree. And we find out whether there is actually a hostile enemy force there. Suggest that there might be, but I haven't been able to ascertain whether there is any... <laughs> anything there at all anyway. There doesn't seem to be any visual acknowledgement of that fact.
Glad to hear it, Russ. Very glad to hear it. Attacking and landing. Here we go. It's happening, chat. Oh, God. The tree's on fire. Oh. Did we do it? Did we cap it? I think the a, a big green bubble is a, a big green good, right? Uh, still says attacking and landing. Congratulations, you captured Sydney. Uh oh. Wait, what? Wait, what is our squad doing? Why is it floating out there? Oh, it's just, it just says it's landing. Sorry for the ads, just right. Um, yeah, I guess it takes time. So, this is the marketplace. For a hundred... $90, you get 6,000 red tokens and 200 blue tokens. Some boosts. Workers. Metal. Heavy metal. 12,000 metal. Holy moly, dude. I mean, we could afford this, actually. We could just afford to buy the metal on the marketplace. That is true. Uh... Some oil, energy, donate to Battle Dawn. Golden Colony. Your colony will be surrounded by a golden wall for this era to show your power. <laughs> what? Uh... No worries, just right. Thanks again for the raid. I really appreciate it. Take care. We'll uh, we'll see you next time. Farewell. Um, a new name. Reset your avatar skills. Items. Oh, so I guess these are the vanity items. Mono glasses, 3D glasses, baseball cap, barbarian vest, boots of legend. <laughs> I do like vanity items in games. For me personally, these are the types of like microtransactions and stuff that I can get on board with that I'm like totally okay exist with existing in a game. Because it's like, you know, people like to, you know, uh, have have you know a, a, themselves look a certain way in a game and they should be able to do that and it's a good way to oh wait what the, hang on these aren't just vanity these items actually give you effects like extra unit damage right unit experience plus 40 percent Holy shit. Wow. So that's a thing. That is a thing. I'm kind of disappointed that it's not just cosmetics. Because I feel like cosmetics are more justifiable than that. <sighs> Good night, just right. Good night. Um, uh, 
file. It's a whole thing. So, I'm just trying to work out, like, trying to work out the cost of these things. Because, like, the, I think looking at it, the most expensive thing in the shop here is 600 tokens. So, 600 tokens is roughly equivalent to $15. Which is pretty expensive. But I think this is like one of those things that if you're, if you're really into this game, $16 to have 40% more unit experience is probably something you're willing to pay. Or 26% more avatar experience. Uh, also, when is my unit going to land? What is What is happening here right now? We've been attacking and landing for like forever. Is there a battle event? There was like a brief fire, right? We're now part of the builder faction. Military, no events. What? I'm very confused. It says I should have arrived by now. Uh, what about if I send my avatar? Let's send the avatar in there to see if that makes any difference. Maybe if I'm, maybe if I'm capturing a resource point, I have to send my avatar? Question mark? I, I don't know. It did not, ca unfortunately, it did not cover this part in the actual tutorial, which is a bit of a letdown because it means that I have no idea what, I mean, this shield means, what the landing phase means and why it's taking forever. Just a little bit confused. Also says I was last online 15 minutes ago. Fair. Apparently there is an avatar level bug. What? An avatar level bug. Uh, the good news is that we're nearly at 500... Uh, 500 metal. So we can actually build the next thing in our... Little log here that we needed. And wait, is this, so is this 60 times speed? 60 times. Oh, I see ads. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Well, we won't bug abuse during a sponsored segment, but I guess if anybody out there is interested, they can look it up. Uh, avatar management, equipment. You need to be... You need your avatar to be on your colony to change your gear. Okay. I see. Yeah, I had a brief read of the reviews before I played tonight as well. Because I wasn't really sure what to expect. Uh... And I know it is mixed feedback on the on the Steam reviews. So we've done 13 of the 22 basic missions. Are there other ones here? Send your avatar on a wreckage, metal mine, or oil well. Your avatar can conquer structures but be careful it cannot attack so be sure that there is no defense or on it or an escort or on it or escort it with battle units like tiger fangs choose between a wreckage a metal mine or an oil well 
Okay, so maybe this is what we need to be doing. Sending our avatar to it to actually capture it. And then it's all just about building up our reactors and stuff to level 5. Oh, looks of things. So 30 seconds until our avatar gets there. So maybe this group wasn't able to land because our avatar wasn't there. Maybe that's the, the missing link. And we've just so happened to have stumbled stumbled into the solution to this dilemma. We'll find out in 10 seconds at any rate. Although it does say, what does it say? Metal mine? Does a metal tree count as a metal mine? I don't know. Oh no. Now both of them <laughs> are landing. <laughs> what is going on? I'm so confused. I have no idea. Uh. Okay. So we haven't fought any battles yet. Uh, okay, let's upgrade our our mines again if we can. Oh no, we need 2,000 metal to upgrade our mines. Jeez. Which is our next thing, which is level 4. Uh, we can upgrade our met, uh, energy reactor though, so let's get that happening. Okay, so our colony site is dictated by the scanner. Maybe I'm missing something in our base. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's send uh, some new units over to Shui Squad Alpha. Maybe, I sh maybe I've overspent on units. Maybe that was a mistake. Or maybe I should have. Maybe I should have spent some money onto a resource converter or something. Uh, confusing, Sarge. I I'm not really quite sure what to make of it, to be honest. There's. Elements to it that I like, but there's also elements to it that I think I'm disappointed with. Scan and covert operations. I don't, I just don't understand why my troops aren't landing. Because they're just stuck here. So I could send these guys over here to join them too. And this is with 5% metal generation as well. Oh my goodness. What do relics do? It didn't explain what relics are either in the tutorial. What does a what does a heckin' relic do? I wonder if there's any close to Australia right now. No. They've got crystals on them. So I wonder if the crystals are like a, a special resource or something that people can fight over. Oh, here we go. There's one actually... Relic 7 is 
to the north of Australia here. So we could send something over there. It would take us, it would cost us 500 oil and it would take 20 minutes. Oh my God. Oh, control all 10 to win the game. Oh, I see. So these are actually like a moving capture point. See, that's a really cool mechanic. That's a really cool mechanic, having a movable capture point that kind of drifts around the globe uh, randomly. Uh, and you have to fight over it in real time. That's a really fun little strategy mechanic. I like that a lot. But I'm just a little bit frustrated not understanding why my troops aren't landing. Like we did the fight and now it's not progressing. But we did what I thought we... The tree caught on fire and then suddenly it had a shield and now we can't land. Can I redirect them? I can recall them. Alright. Let's send our squads back. Let's return them home. This, this obviously is not working out, unfortunately. For whatever reason. I don't know why. It could be, perhaps, that there's, like, maybe some kind of, like, shield mechanic in this game that it hasn't explained in the tutorial. And maybe this is controlled by somebody else and I need some kind of special weapon or something to break through the shield to actually even contest the point. Perhaps? I, I don't know. Uh, but now I've got to work out instead where metal is. Because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where metal is. Uh, what about if we do where's my other squad didn't I have another squad I did have another squad here didn't I yeah I've got Shui squad alpha where are they No, no, so that's my, that's my other squad. This is, this is Shui Squad Gamma. Uh, Shui Squad Alpha, we can actually see them. Okay, here we go. Now I've got the option. So, what is this? This is a, so these are other people's outposts that have the little ping marker on it, I guess. But how, how do I know where metal is? Is metal just the the stone on the ground oh it's not even a destination okay what is this proto human camp okay uh, that's not what we want what's this this is an oil well okay we want metal is that metal metal mine here we go ETA for minutes. What about this? What's this down here? That is an oil well as well. Oh, wait. Is this the, is the number behind it the identifier? Or is that how much metal it has there? I hope it has more than 33 metal. Otherwise, I'm going to be a bit upset. Um... All right, let's confirm. Let's send them out. They're going. They're off. They're off. Yeah, I I think it is an ID, Sarge. Yeah, you could be right. So maybe... Wait, hold on. <laughs> uh, 
It's Arch. <laughs> it's Arch play stuff. Oh my god. <laughs> he hasn't done his biography either, the noob. <laughs> well. Hi. Sort out your bio, you noob. I did say at the start of the sponsored segment that it was a free-to-play game if anybody else wanted to join in. That is super sneaky. I wonder if this is controlled by Arch. I wonder if he beat me to the punch. What is this? A garrison. Where's my settlement? My settlement is on the east coast of Australia. Southeast coast of Australia. Yeah, down on the old, down on the old waterline. So it's shielded. I wonder if shielded is like a player protection. Yeah, see, I can see Archer's colony here. So he's a builder as well. Rank 141, power 13. So he's actually better than me. Uh, and he has protection for the next seven hours, just about. Uh, the, what does shielded mean? It doesn't have an owner. What is, what, how do I beat shields? So I would like greatly increased metal. And then there's just random outposts out here. I don't know what these outposts are meant to do. It's kind of weird. Uh, we've got an event message. A friend request has been sent to Arch. Okay, cool. I don't know if it's been accepted yet. Apparently not. We are not friends right yet. Maybe soon, though. Hey, Dark Malice. Good to see you. How you doing today? We are not friends. And dare you. Wait, is that my army? That is my army, yeah. So I could send... could send my army over to Archer's place, but he has shielded protection, so I assume that's not a great idea. Uh, what's this? This is another proto-human camp. What is this? Not a lot of metal over here. There's a lot of oil. Is that... No, human camp. What do the mines actually look like? Kind of like a... Little square building. So not like that. Is this the only metal mine in... Oh, no, there's a mine here. That's a mine there. Also, I guess it gets marked with whoever controls it. I see. Okay. Right. What about if I do send something over here? Oh, I can't send squads to an... Oh, you can't send it to a something that you can't see. Huh. Okay. All right. Well, let's go over to the proto-human camp. So, did we have to fight? Okay. So, we now control Metal Mine 33. Do we have to fight over it? I guess not. Uh, 
how much metal does it give us? It increases your alliance metal production while controlled. Uh, where was the resource gain tab? And do I have to keep my army here or can I just kind of keep going? That's too far away. I should have built this outpost a little bit further out so I could try and link them together. Uh, uh, we could try and take over this well. Let's go try and take over this oil well down here. We're attacking the five alliance which could be unwise because I think it's all owned by this person over here not by us they've kind of got a monopoly on Australia I suppose oh if I scroll out it actually shows us the resources Oh, so there's wreckage out here in the middle of the ocean that could be raided for random resources. I see. Huh. There's a, quite a lot of resources down in Antarctica. As it turns out. So there must be like some very much some since this is all very much interconnected with where you can go and what you can do and all the resources there must be some kind of pretty big meta in terms of the you know where you want to start and what resources you want to try and control and looking at it yeah metal metal seems to be pretty hard to come by for the most part Holy cow, this game is slow, I've got to say. A few minutes until our armies arrive, and then even then, once they arrive, it doesn't feel like we get much of a dopamine hit from actually arriving there, because it's like, cool, that increases our resource production by 0.05%. It's an e I was talking about this earlier, Dark Malus. I don't know whether the... I don't know whether the... Map is accurate or not. It's kind of weird. Okay, here we go. So resource production per hour is 900 metal per hour. So at this rate, to afford the next upgrade we need for the metal mine... We would need to wait another two and a bit hours to reach level four on the metal mine. And what for the oil well? Is it 2,000 as well? No, 1,500. A very reasonable 1,500. An energy reactor is 1,000. Potentially, Sarge. I know that some of the reviews I did read on Steam did mention stuff like that. I was hoping that this wouldn't be... I was hoping this would be a little bit more... I don't know. I was hoping this would be a little bit faster than what it is. I think. Because I do find the idea of a strategy MMO a pretty interesting one. And I think it has a lot of potential. But, I mean, obviously there are people playing this. Uh, but this may not be the one that I was hoping it was. I mean, 
it's hard to tell based off of that, right? Dark Malice. Because you could say, oh, well, you know, a good game will speak for itself. But that's not the case. Every game needs uh, to advertise and needs to sponsor people to play it and stuff like that. And we've been sponsored by games that are really, really, really good. Uh, and we've had a great time playing them. Like Total War Warhammer 3. I love that game. We've been sponsored by them to play the game. It's a good time. Oh, here we go. Is there something happening up here? Or are we fighting over this? There's a fire happening. Oh, the shield no longer has a, a shield over it. I wonder if we can... Uh-oh. Did we lose our army? <gasps> We lost the battle in the proto-human camp. See the battle report. Attackers. We had one Tiggy. One little Tiggy. Oh. <laughs> Dark Malice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, wow, they've got a, a Cactus Joe, a Teethy Shark, two Crockies, a Lizzie, <laughs> a Pointy, and a Tiggy. Uh, I have to say, the, if nothing else, the... I, I, there's, there's, the art concept of this I do like it having these weird genetically spliced together creatures where you can take different bodies and mix them with different attributes and mix them with different weapons I think that's really neat that's a really cool take on it I like the idea of having those capture points around those moving capture points on the globe that's really awesome there's also no way that we can do this. So we can actually see the... Uh, so our army was worth 100 metal and 1 population. The defender army was worth 1650 metal and 550 oil. 11 population. Wow. Uh, yeah, we got absolutely destroyed. Absolutely destroyed. Uh, well. Uh, but on the up upside, we did get to take over the oil well down to the south hill. So, uh, that's good news. Did we have to fight over that? Doesn't look like it. Does not look like it. So I wonder how we tell if a particular place has defenders in it or not. Okay, let's move our army maybe back to the metal outpost. And see how we go from there. What we could do is spend some of these points to get the metal to upgrade our stuff. That might be the play here, is to spend some metal, uh, spend some of our tokens to get the metal to upgrade our mine so we produce metal faster. Uh, Nutty Bar Supreme, hello there. Do I have a podcast? My voice is awesome. Thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Uh, not currently. But 
I do regularly appear on the Halcyon Frequency podcast, which if you type in exclamation mark podcast, uh, you will find that. It is a group of uh, group of streamers called the Halcyon Frequency that I'm a part of, and we do a weekly podcast production, and we rotate through uh, different guests and different hosts and stuff. Um, and I can't tell you too much right now, but there will also be an announcement towards the end of this week. Maybe podcast related, who knows? But I won't say any more than that for the moment. But uh, yeah, I'm playing the old age old waiting game. I was just pondering whether I should go get some nachos because I didn't have dinner tonight and my partner ordered Taco Bell and uh, got me some nachos. I was like, man, I could go for some Taco Bell nachos. It's nearly 1 a.m. in Australia. I'm pretty hungry. That's right, Meg. The Taco Bell. I'm even sitting like Sim right now. <laughs> This is my new Simcopter cosplay, Sarge. Hey, Sharon, how you doing? Welcome in. Making us wait. I'm, I'm doing the old waiting game. Yeah, Friday. Friday will be, all will be revealed. And I'm, I'm really excited for it, actually. Gee whiz. Okay, let's do that. Let's spend these tokens uh, so we can get uh, so we can get some metal. So if we spend a hundred tokens, right now we've got 200 blue tokens. We can get 6,000 metal. Or we can spend 190 tokens and get 12,000 metal. So I think I might do this. Because we'll get some tokens back from completing this. And this is going to, this costs us... 10 tokens less. So yes, let's comp let's purchase heavy metal. There we go. Coffee time for you. Hell yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. Not all will be revealed. Don't worry. Some will be revealed. It doesn't sound quite as nice rolling off the tongue though, does it? Oh no, I'm not trying to do destinations. I want to go in here. Okay, all right. Let's uh, upgrade our mine. Boom. There's 2,000 metal spent. That's going to be our upgrade. Why is this a five-minute upgrade and this is an hour? <laughs> what the hell? Uh, oh, and now I'm out of oil. Perfect. Perfect. Can I, can I get oil? No, everything is a minimum of a hundred tokens. And I need to wait until this, these are both done to get more tokens. I don't even think I've got enough oil to get my armies back. I'm going to get, I'm going to go get my tacos, <laughs> my nachos. I'll be back chat. I don't even, I don't even know if you can up, uh, speed this up. It's, it's not like you can pay to speed this up. Like you can buy more resources, but you can't actually speed up the building process. Oh, that smells good. Yum. Mmm. 
I was talking about this the other day, but I know I've been harsh about Taco Bell in the past, but there's something about the nachos, the nacho seasoning they do in Australia. So good. No, these are cold, Sarge. These are cold. These, <laughs> these were ordered like four hours ago, but they still taste good. Where is the mayo? There's no mayo. There is sour cream on these. They look pretty good, right? I'm gonna show you. This is this is the the nachos. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I just saw on the stream preview that the guac is green screened out <laughs> which looks kind of weird admittedly yeah it's invisa guac I wonder, I wonder how uh, Arch is going with this. Arch is rank 142 and he's power 13. What am I? I'm still power, oh, I'm power 14 now. And I'm rank 140. So I'm, I'm better than Arch. I think that's one of the key takeaways here. Um... Metal Home Tree 2. Metal Home Tree 2. What does that... What does that even mean? Metal Home Tree 2. So I don't know... I don't understand why it shielded before. And why it's not shielded now. I feel like the tutorial leaves a little bit to be desired in terms of actually explaining the mechanics of the actual gameplay on the map. Because I don't think I really understand... Yay! Mission complete. There we go. Okay, so send your avatar on a wreckage metal mine for 20 tokens. Oh, you know what? The irony here is probably going to be that I can't afford to send my avatar to the metal mine. Oh, no, we can. 30 oil. There we go. It's on its way. And that'll actually bring us pretty close to being able to get some more oil. Camole. Camo Amole. Are you my daddy? Are you my daddy? Hey, Aurora. It's Aurora. It's good to see you. How are you? How's your, uh... How's your week going? Happy hump day. What's in the menu? It's a weird way of phrasing it. Do you mean what's on the menu? The menu, we're having nachos right now, Aurora. I'm enjoying some nachos. Cause it's late and I haven't had dinner. Um, there's aspects of this game, Cattlejack, that I really like. 
Uh, but I'll be honest, I think the tutorial leaves a little bit to be desired in terms of actually explaining the mechanics. And it's really slow. It's really slow to play. <laughs> I would be eating them with my fingers if I didn't have to interact with my keyboard and stuff. Sharon. It's only because I know I'm going to need to use my keyboard and mouse that I'm like, I'll use a fork. You say you were eating nachos. Mm -hmm. You like nachos, don't you, Squidward? Mm -hmm. I mean, Drongo. Yeah. Nah. -uh. Choo choo. Choo choo. All right. Thank you for the uh, six month three sub. I appreciate it. Cheeto mouse is the worst. There is nothing grosser than food getting on your peripherals. And I know I might be calling some of you watching out there. Might be calling you out. I'm not sorry. Clean it up. <laughs> Cavi. It's good to see you. I hope you're well, Cavi. I know the feeling though. It's like, what are you what are you trying to suggest here? I think I fixed my old mouse though, Sarge. It's been working fine the last couple of days, so I don't think I need to buy a new mouse. Just straight up use my mouth. Like use this as a bowl, a, a trough. Is that what you're suggesting here, Aurora? Hmm. I sent my avatar to a metal mine, but it didn't... It didn't capture it. Well, I mean, it is already captured, but it didn't trigger the mission. So we didn't get those tokens. So we need... Is there wreckage around here? Is that wreckage? Wreckage. 20 minutes to get there and it'll cost me 390 oil excuse me <laughs> Sarge yeah that is true caught in caught in HD face planting a cake where's that Aurora are you going to suggest this stream? I think the only other mine in Australia is this one. That's going to cost me 390 oil to get there too. They all saw my shame. That is true, Sarge. That is true. Oh, I think that's... Actually, that's an iron mine there, isn't it? 300 oil to get there, though. 53 degrees north. I am the wreckage. <laughs> I see, Aurora. I understand. Hmm. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, Candlejack. I... I play a lot of very slow games. Like, Worm Online is my most played game ever. It is notorious for being very slow. Um... So, I, I definitely understand the appeal of these sorts of games. Oh, 
I'm sorry you're feeling perpetually tired, Aurora. <laughs> I should chew closer to the mic. Is the mic picking up me chewing? I didn't think it was. Maybe it is. I apologize if it is. A little bit? Okay. I'm sorry, chat. I didn't mean to. It's not, but it should be. <laughs> I don't, I don't think uh, ASMR is the pathway which I want to take this stream down. Do create streams. What uh, what do you mean by create streams, Cabby? Oh, all right, okay. Okay, on the Creates channel, I see what you're saying. Uh, it's it's mostly random. And admittedly, I have not been live on there for probably about a month at least. Um, and I do have a big backlog of art that I need to catch up on, which is really unfortunate. I do need to get on top of that. Um, what about if I try and send my whale and avatar to here? Oh, I can't send both of them. I don't have enough oil. Ugh, buddy. Do the nachos have onion? Mm, not unless... It, there's probably a little bit of onion in the, the beef mince. But there's not, like, chunks of onion, no. There's sour cream. There's tomato. There's some, like, cheesy nacho sauce. Uh, and then there's beef. And then there's the nachos themselves. Mm. Yeah. I'll be doing some soon, Cavi. I'll be doing some soon. Um, if you're in the Discord and you're signed up on the going live role, you'll you'll know when we're live. Uh, and I always announce it when we're live on that channel as well. Same as the same as the main channel. I also have this, which was left on top of the bag of nachos, and I don't know what it is. Oh, it's half of a, is this chicken? It's half of a soft chicken taco, I think. Yeah, it's only half. <laughs> it didn't come like this, I'm sure. Oh, go. <laughs> mm. Road taco is my favorite type of taco, Aurora. She doesn't like eating the uh, the same thing twice, Aurora. So any any leftovers always have my name on it. <clears throat> I know. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. I'm a very very lucky man. <laughs> K 
kettle, Jack. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine. All right, chat. I think that brings us to the end of our sponsored segment tonight, just about. It's a bit of a... Not a low note, but it's almost a little bit anticlimactic because it doesn't feel like we've gotten to achieve very much. But then again, it is a, a pretty slow-paced game. So I, I don't know what else we could have done, really. But we're, uh, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, but yeah, I guess just as a, a quick summary chat, uh, thanks, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for giving this game a chance. I really appreciate it. Um, Battle Dawn is a skill-based strategy MMO where through clever moves and cunning strategies, even the smallest player can topple the giant. Um, I wish we got to see more of the combat and experience more of that. Because uh, I am intrigued by the, the system of having to splice together your armies and having these unit cards and choosing all the different bits and pieces. Like, that to me is kind of a really cool aspect that I wish I got to see a little bit more about and maybe seen some more about these flying relics, these control points that apparently if you control all of those, then you win the, the scenario. Um, it's a team-based game. Uh, and it's very easy to make friends for life in this game. And, uh, wow, we found a friend right here. A friend for life. Arch play stuff. Look at that little fella down there. And the servers are all real time. And there's various different speeds of servers. And we're on a, a 60 times speed server at the moment, which... To be completely honest, I can't imagine playing this on one time speed. That would be long. That would be very long. Also, why is this tree now just randomly on fire? <laughs> oh, that's because my army's attacking and landing there. I forgot. I kind of sent that them off to do that. Uh, but apparently, yeah, so Battle Dawn gets compared to games like Risk. I can kind of see that in terms of, like, controlling continents and controlling resource points and stuff like that, but, yeah. Uh, I don't know if I'll come back to this. I don't think I will. Um, I can see the potential in it, but I don't think this is one for me, unfortunately. Uh, did we do it? Did we capture the base? No. What happened? We lost the battle at the Metal Home Tree. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> oh my god! Excuse me, sir. Your yes? tree is on fire, Shui Gazer. <laughs> uh, thank you for the 11 month, Sarge. Uh, sorry, not Sarge, Ras. What is this army, dude? So, for. <laughs> so our army was worth 700 metal, 7 population. The defending army was worth 172,850 metal, 51,850 oil, 12,010 population. <laughs> we just inadvertently stumbled into just the worst holy moly dude i wish there was some kind of representation to understand whether a, a control point is currently being occupied or not 247 times more powerful than ours my god i guess it was a little bit optimistic of us to try and think that we could capture the metal home tree dear dear oh dear uh, but yeah, thank you everybody for giving this uh, this game a chance. Uh, if you do want to check out this game, I know Candlejack said this is up there, Ali. Um, go and check it out through that link there. Um, I will say that uh, a big thank you to, um, to Battle Dawn for sponsoring this stream, um, helping me as a full-time content creator, and uh, I appreciate everybody giving it a chance. And uh, just by checking it out, going through and looking uh, at the game, 
it helps me out too. Uh, and at the end of the day, it is a free game too. So you don't lose anything by checking it out. So even if you're kind of on the fence, give it a go. See see what you think. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Candlejack's on it. Hell yeah, Candlejack. Awesome. Uh, chat. Socials. If you're not already in the community discord, jump in there. We'd love to see you. Uh, Twitter and Instagram. It's going to be a busy week, so there's got to be a lot of stuff going out on both Twitter and Instagram. And I think we have ads right now, annoyingly. Perfectly timed. nice sarge yeah that feels like the the best way to utilize those seems very powerful okay i think we passed the ads so um yeah sorry uh I don't, I don't remember what I was saying, but we're going to finish up tonight's stream with a raid chat, as we normally do. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight. We're going to go say hi with... Uh, hmm. Who are we going to go say hi to? Let's go say hi to Kiri. She's playing some Rimwall tonight. Um, I think she's also talking about the hot potato event coming up later this month uh so yeah let's go let's go find out what kiri has to say we'll be back live again on friday i'm thinking we won't actually play rimwald we won't do a full stream of rimwald for the first time in a while i think we'll mix it up we might jump back into minecraft we might play some geoguessr uh, there's other games that have been on my mind too could potentially play some worm could play some uh runescape old school runescape i don't know but tune in to find out i'd love to see you there Oh yeah, raid messages. Thanks, sorry, I'm a little bit scatterbrained right now. Uh, there you go. Raid messages there, copy paste those, chat. And uh, yeah, like I said, I'll see you Friday. Take care, everybody. Thanks for hanging out. See you next time. Farewell. Cassie, right?